coming up on the next episode of the Celsius Pod. I sincerely hope they retcon the movies just so, like, this series can stand alone. She doesn't have sex that night. Oh. <gasps> no way. You know why you can't get pregnant? Because they don't want you to get pregnant. You're not the type of person they want you to get pregnant. Well, while I have Peacock, what other shows are on Peacock? Fucking nothing! There's nothing on this goddamn streaming service! Guys, it's the first real episode back. We had a series of like three specials in a row, but now 61, we're back it's on true. track. No and because we for- 14 things because what I'm for- watching, longest episode in podcast history. But because we forgot to uh, mention the weather in all of those episodes prior, uh, the temperature right now is 55 degrees. The temperature right now is 55 degrees. The temperature right now is 55 degrees. That should cover all episodes yep. uh, that we've missed and this episode today. All right. And Nicola, why is the weather in Belgrade? He's in... Uh, he doesn't he know has to that. do that for some reason. But right now he's looking aimlessly into a monitor. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, say it again. What's the temperature in Belgrade? The temperature in Belgrade is 10 degrees Fahrenheit. You know, that seems very cold. Okay, I guys, I have a little gripe. Or not gripe. Did you say gripe? Gripe. Did you say gripe? Did you say gripe? So, in, in, uh, in, 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 in Stranger Things Season 1, they're all like, you know... When Will disappears, they're all like, you know, 99% of the time, it's like the parent who, like, takes the kid. And But then Joyce, his mom says, what about the other 1%? Is the other 1% being abducted by some sort of upside-down alien? Is that the other 1%? It might question. be. What? Yeah. What, what does that have to do it, with it, anything, Murray? I, I just kept thinking about I that. I mean, you wanted to start the podcast with. He makes a valiant point. I mean, he's right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Beck, is it the other 1% just being abducted by some sort of alien thing, creature? No, it's by, like, someone that isn't a parent. 1% seems kind of low. As a, yeah. yeah, kind of low. Yeah, but, um, you know, I'm sure, th- I'm sure the writers planned that out for five seasons, and then it's really going to get paid off mm-hmm. in the last season. Don't worry. Yep. Wow. Well, I better, I guess we should get into other topics right now. Like what we have been reading, actually. I want to talk about what I've been reading. I finished a book, Uri. I've read two books, so I can finish this book. I was reading last time. Let's go. Okay, so I think another person has probably read this with me because, okay, so I currently have been reading, well, I guess more like listening to the audiobook to Jeanette McCurdy's. I'm glad my mom died. Has oh, anyone else oh, read it? I've heard the yeah, first. I want to read it. Chapters. The uh, my AP line teacher like recommended it as one of the books we could read. Yeah, I read the first four chapters, and then uh, because I got a PDF from it from like my school, and then I said, "Hey, who wants to read it?" And Uri was like, "I'll read." it. And I was like, "Okay, I'll probably read it in the future." But here you go, Uri. So I've read the first so, four chapters. I've listened to like the first thirty chapters mm-hmm. so far, and I'm it. It is a wonderfully told book. Mm-hmm. It is a very, very interesting book. It's a little backstory because, like, I like I don't know how many else of you like I grew up watching the Disney channels and the Nickelodeon, yeah. and iCarly was one of the was one of the big shows. I would say that I I really I really liked. I think me and my sister would always like watch that show. You know, I I I downloaded it for like planes and stuff like that. You know, it was one of the shows I actually really liked. I think um, it's one of like the one of the like the top shows I remember I think like other than maybe Wizards of Waverly Place, which we have a lot of other Abu. things, you know, yeah. Jesse's. That yeah. one we watched Perfect. on New Year's. No, I was, yes, we I was did. saying Wizards is getting a um, reboot, which I yeah, think is, is. kind of stupid. <laughs> but we'll get into that a little later. Um, no, we won't. So we don't need to. No, we won't. There's nothing else to talk about. This is getting one. Yeah, but um. And so it's a, but then, you know, like I, Car- I Carly went off the air, but then like, I think maybe like maybe two years ago, there was like, or something, this book came out and it was like, 
this kind of like the tolling like um of of the of Sam actress and why she like stopped acting and like it kind of like I I hadn't read the book but I know it's something to do with her mom obviously because that's the book title yeah. but like so I th- I recently like maybe a week ago I started reading it and it's a very very harrowing story the abuse in it is very very dark and it's a very harsh story but. She does write in a way that's very funny. It's it's not anything new I'm saying, but the way she writes is very comedic. That kind of balances out kind of the darkness because honestly, if it was just the darkness, it would be kind of a hard read. Yeah. But she kind of balances out like, and this is some dark shit. Like, um, like here's, here's a little story or something. I have a thing. So, um, cause she made the mom really wanted to be an actress when, um, but she like her. She said her parents never let her, uh-huh. so she kind of forced that dream onto Jeanette, and um, you know the, and so she forced the dream on Jeanette. And she, was, she was kind of controlling, and you no, know, the mom had cancer, and so there's always like kind of like a fear the cancer would come back. So when um Jeanette was kind of like hitting puberty, she felt like a lump or something, and then she went. She thought it was cancer, so she went to her mom, and then the mom says. That's not cancer. That's just your breast growing. And then she's all like, but then Jeanette's all like worrying, like, how can I stay the same, st- stay small? And then you assume like the mom's going to say, honey, you can't really stay small. That's how puberty grows. You're going to grow. But then she said, instead of like saying the obvious thing a parent would say, she says, well, I can put you, well, let's talk about calorie restriction. Ooh. Instead of like, instead of saying like, it's normal. We're gonna get you calorie restriction, and that she also created an eating disorder within her daughter, essentially. Mm-hmm. And um, and so it's a very, very harrowing story. Um, another this her dad was all was also in the story kind of, but he was more of a guy who was like kind of like mentally checked out, and he was never really a father to her. There was an example of that I thought was very. It wasn't very as like disgusting as the eating disorder one, but it was like kind of just shocking in a way. She sounded like her eighth birthday. Her father gave her a card, but he spelled her name wrong. Oh wow! And I'm like, Ugh. that felt very brutal to me. And like, it's a. I suggest anyone who wants to kind of get into like, um, kind of like um more of that um, kind of like the Hollywood kind of like child stars because it is a very brutal industry for child actors, mm-hmm. as we all know. Anyone who's seen BoJack would know that. Um, but yeah, it's a very it's a it's it's a harsh tale, but. So far as I'm going through it, it's I haven't gone to like any of the like, you know, she made it through, but it's clear I've seen some interviews and podcasts with her and she has it she does seem she's in a way better place now and she's more taking control of her story with this book. That's good though. For yeah. me it just felt like way too sad, you know? Like I don't want to be like reading this say, depressing book. I would say you could pop it does it does feel sad, but there's a lot of comedic elements. Uh, certainly she plays it, so I feel like if you if you you should mobby. I thought it was sad too, but if you like, maybe get through make the growing pains. I feel like it's it's more funny than you think it would be. But yeah, yeah, wow. I, because it, the mom is just na- naturally kind of like funny unintentionally because she has some sort of cadences that is like psycho, but it seems kind of funny. Yeah, she's the uh, stereotypical tiger mom, as she would put it. Mm. No, he's more like a bipolar kind of borderline personality. Oh, so just like person. a normal, a normal stage mom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Eastern Europe, just like Eastern. Yeah, but yeah. um, that's just I. It's a very interesting read, and yeah, I suggest anyone. Honestly, who wants having to get... a bipolar parent just makes you, it just raises you better. I don't know about that, Beck. What did you? What have you been you, reading? It gives do you, you, do you, do you so want, much. Do you not want to go first, or do you not want to go to that? Um, you can go first because I haven't finished either book. All right, yeah. So. There's one that I have to read for school, and it's mildly interesting. It's a graphic memoir. So it's a graphic novel, which, um, so it's kind of easier to read. It's about this guy. His name is David Small, and he's a big guy. I didn't know this was a No, a I'm just like looking, I'm looking at the book. It's just on the floor. Oh. <laughs> um, well, you I don't know. You can't even reach it. Yeah, I, hold on. I can reach it. A second. <laughs> so what's, stick. um, what's, um... What's this? Um, what is David Small about? Um, so this book, Stitches, is about him and his life growing up in Detroit. Here's the book here. Ooh, there's a um, lot of posted notes in there. <laughs> they're all novel. 
It's a graphic novel. They're you all love fake because graphic I have to make novels. Them. You love 1984 graphic novel. You love Fahrenheit 451 graphic novel. That one's also sitting on the floor. <laughs> um, but it's a graphic novel. Um, it's just about like him and his family in Detroit, and his family sucks ass. And I got this kind of part that I've been reading is like he has a cyst in his throat. And I guess I got to the part where it's finally about stitches because it wasn't actually a cyst, it was cancer. Mm. Oh, I thought he was cutting himself. No, but here's all the here's like the stitches. Ooh. So kind of nasty. But it it's a very interesting book. I was only supposed to read up to page 191, and then I read it a little bit more because it started to get interesting. Congrats. So I can and talk about that, that book next week. The other book that I'm reading Baron is Hitchhiker's Guide. Aww. No, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Is that now, like Gardens of the Galaxy? Uh, no, not at all. It's about this guy. Wait, so... Huh? It's 42. So true, but that's not the first book. That's like in the second book. There's two books? No. There's five books. There's five books. <laughs> Hold on, what what? Well, which one's the movie based off? Which one is the movie based off of? Fucking all of them? I don't know. You can't adapt five books into one movie. Hold on, where is the fucking Watch book? me. Hold on. This is a fucking I adapted joke. all I adapted all of jo- all four John Wick movies into my multiversal nothings. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's almost like all four of them are it's insanely in similar and very easy to translate into an adaptation. It's adaptive. in my backpack. I found it. I forgot I brought it to school so I can read it. You read at school? Crazy. It's, 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 it's all five books. Yeah, I mean, it's five. Oh, it's all five? Oh, okay, that's good. That's good. It's a, oh, it's a collection of all sense. five of the books. So I haven't made it very far into the first one. Uh, but so, so far his planet has been destroyed. That's, so that's kind of what it is, is this character, uh, Arthur Dent, he's like, wow, my life fucking sucks. They're going to destroy my house. And the alien guy, Ford Prefect, he's like, don't worry, Earth is going to explode. And he's also written this book called Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And then they hitchhike around the galaxy. Oh, I love when they do that. They name the thing in the thing. Yeah, when you, uh-huh. when you say right? the name of the book in the book. So the book yeah, actually I can't, like, roll credits. The book started actually yeah. as a radio show. And then they they converted like episodes 1 through 5 of the radio show into the book. And then for the second book, they converted episodes 7 through 12 and then 6 into the second book and then books 3, 4 and 5 are completely made up of shit. And it's super disconnected, and nothing makes sense, and it's written poorly, and it's great. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And are you gonna are you gonna fully read that all of it? I hope think? so. I've read the first three books. That's kind of why I got it because I've read the first three of them, and I did enjoy them. So they are I, thick books. Well, this is the whole. This is all five books. Oh. Oh. Um. But I do plan on reading them all, and then that i'll probably watch soon i've seen it before and it's been, it was good but i'll continue to i'll watch it probably later but that's my book talk okay. yeah. no there was also a new chapter of the jojo lands part yeah. nine came out and i also read oh, that the hype uh i'll leave it off on that i guess all right that's my book talk can i get into well, what i'm okay. reading Mm-hmm. All right. Wow, this is just a book podcast, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. What is it, a book club? <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, I'm going to talk about something you guys probably haven't heard of. Has anyone here heard of, heard of Mistborn? No. Okay, so... Basically, what the general premise is, is, like... So... You all, you have, like... Imagine, like, a thousand... Or, like... 0.1% of the population has, like... A, it's called, like, Alame... Ala, <laughs> Wait, how do I say it? Alamantic? Alamantic. (laughs) Alamantic powers. Alamancy. Yeah. So each one of them is like unique. It's like if you basically you eat the metal or like you drink it usually in water. And when it's in your body, you can like burn it or like use it up in your body and it'll like do something. So like tin will increase your senses, make you like more dense to that. Pewter will give you a lot of strength. And there's cool ones like steel allows you to like 
pull on metal objects and like with like, you know like physics oh, where wow. if you pull on something it pulls back and you can like shoot yourself oh, like you that. Fly. So like a small percentage of that usually like only like nobility <laughs> have those abilities. But then, like one in a million is what's called a Missborn, and they have every Ooh. and they can burn every oh, single I type heard of metal. Of this and I might have heard of this before. For me, it's like has one of the best magic systems in like any book because it's like so simple, and they're able Fuck. to use all of the like unique properties of like these very simple premises to like do insane stuff. Like, mm-hmm. and you know, Beck loves a magic system. I do love a good magic system. That's <laughs> what I started magic. watching this. I watched a video on good magic systems. They were like, the Mistborn series has a really good magic system. I'm like, all right, I will uh-huh. read it. I started it like literally, um, like summer 2022. So I just finished the second book. But yeah, and they do cool things where it's like they have like metal rods stuck into the ground, which allows people to like push on each other to like launch very quickly across stuff it's insane but like the main plot is like they're trying to take down there's been this emperor of the land for a thousand years he's like a mortal and they're like we're gonna kill him so they like they like get together Ooh. a squad and they're like we're gonna kill him and we're gonna like free the land of this empire um, but that, it's Ellie. insanely good i would very much recommend it it's like three books total, um, but yeah, it's insanely good. Nice. Ian, what, what's the main? So the main character's name was the main. The main uh, character's Vin. Name? Vin. Okay. Yeah. Like the Diesel. No. So does they have a good? So how is his like character arc for these? Like she is like books? um like oh, uh she. he starts as like a poverty like thief, and then like um another Mistborn, like, finds her and discovers that she is a Mistborn because it's it's kind of hidden that Alaman- Alamancy exists. So he finds mm. he's like, you're a Mistborn, and then now they're, like, training her to basically... Because a Mistborn is insanely rare. It's like one Mistborn can take down a thousand normal men. So it's insanely rare okay. and insanely useful. But basically it's... Mm her learning how to be a Mistborn in the first book and, like, trying to take down this empire. Mm, okay. Yeah. Very much hero's journey over yeah. there. I mean, to me, yeah. I do not get into a lot of books. I'm really into this book series. So, Nicola, have you read anything? Yeah. Nope. Other than, other than the Unabomber Manifesto, have yeah. you read anything? Uh... Ted Krasinski. Yeah. Uh, no. Other than the boys in the boat, I have not read anything. Okay. Okay. Well, Nicola, does this provide an apt transition? Have you seen the movie? I have seen the boys in the <laughs> boat. Can we can get into about... what we're watching. Whoa! Let's and talk other about anecdotes. The boys in the boat. Yeah. Let's talk about it. I am going to say, if you have never read the book before and you watch the movie. It was a good movie. It was like a, it was a fine movie. The movie was fine. Okay. I wouldn't say it's, it's it's not like award winning. It's not a it's not like absolutely phenomenal, but it's a good movie. I wouldn't say it's a yeah. bad movie. But I have read the book, and I also know the book is historical. It fall it like it's just a historical reencount Um mm-hmm. The movie does not follow the book, so they kind of just write their own history. Do the um, do and the, I don't understand do they, why. Do, I don't know do, why they do it because the book has a really good story. So I don't know why they didn't just remake the book as a movie. Do they win against the Nazis in this one? Yes, I mean they do it in the book as well. That's true. But okay. they basically condense the entire book like really down. Like they combine the first half and the second half, and then they the entire movie. Um, he has this like love interest in this one girl that he's trying to get in the book. He's already married to that girl. Ooh. He met wow. that girl when he was a when he was like 14 and when she came back to the town after she moved away, they started dating and then they married at like at like at like 16 or 17. But in the movie, but in the movie they're like just meeting each other for like the second time in their lives. And they and get married based off a real story, right? And it's based off of a real story. So I don't understand why they changed all this when the real story is just as good. Um, was there a character in there? You know, 
Al. One named <laughs> Al Ervickson, and he does not get well, murdered in this, unfortunately. That's crazy. You know, what's crazy but, to me is when I publish the film, it's like a real guy's name, so it's going to be the murder of Al Ervickson. It's going to be like a historical drama. They really um miss... They kind of take his personality at face value from the book, because it's mm-hmm. very like he's kind of like in the beginning of the book before you like you start to get to know him he's very much known as like he's a stern man he's very much like a stern man and like he like he almost never smiles stuff like that mm-hmm. stuff like that because you don't really know who he is because like it's not from his perspective of the book but like you, you get to know him by the end of the book in the movie they, they kind of play too hard in that starting trope where like he's very much like a like a stone cold, and then like in the end of the movie when they win, he finally smiles. Is he killed? Like, that, that, no, he he does not die. <laughs> but Hitler loses his shit because he did not win because he because he lost the eighth race. Oh yeah, which is really funny. Tetris, there's six. Right? There's six total events. The Germans won five out of the six events, but because okay. they didn't win eights. He lost his mind because everybody remembers it's the last one. It's Rule of Marbles. <laughs> Hitler so forgot about the Rules of Marbles. <laughs> oh. He forgot that if they won that one, they win everything. No, they won Hitler, the war. No. <laughs> yeah, no. That. So basically, and then them winning the rowing race caused Hitler to lose the war. That's what we all know. Basically, well, I, they don't actually go that far, but they do. But they do make him like really pissed off. Wait, do they actually show like a Hitler in the movie? Does he yes. look like Hitler? Yeah, well, he doesn't like really look like Hitler, but like you can like you can tell it's Hitler. Like it's okay. supposed to be Hitler, but it doesn't really look like Hitler. I, th- I like it's really funny. Like he's like a, he, like in the beginning he just looks kind of funny, but like towards the uh, towards but like after he loses, he's like he's like oh, it's like about a lo- like like freaking burst of vein. It's really funny. No, Hitler, no. <laughs> Okay, some other stuff I've been watching. I guess the quick thing I just watched right before the podcast Barn. was the first episode of Silo, which is Say a fucking barn. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I mixed the two up. Barn. I mean, they're, they're so similar. They're both the fucking fuck barn. <laughs> so, Nicola, what's outside the silo? Uh, a lush green world, but I just looked at the, to the, I just spoiled the entire movie to myself, so I now know, I'm the entire show to myself, so I now know what's actually outside the silo. Nuclear war, green. they're pulling a fallout. As of right now, we think it's green outside. It is Wait, green so what's outside. silo about? So basically, it takes place in the future, where basically... 10,000 people are forced to live underground in this big concrete silo that's like 144, like 140 levels, something like that. You have to go, that's like, they don't have any elevators. You have to walk on the spiral staircase, which is really funny to me. It's that nobody decided to invent an elevator. Um, so it like takes a full day from, to go from the top to the bottom, at least. So there's, there's so like in the first episode, at least they're like already like, like we, ha- we took a full day to walk down here. You're really gonna <laughs> like... You're really gonna you can ignore just, like, us. Put it, like a pool of water at the bottom of the silo and just jump into that. <laughs> yeah, you just need one. You just need one block of water. It's not that hard. Everyone should Does just carry mean... buckets of water with them to MLT. <laughs> uh, Does that mean they have to carry like food or backpacks because it takes? Uh, a no, day? there are these people called like runners, and they constantly just run up and down and just bring people supplies and stuff, like little errand boys. But That's in cool. the first episode, we follow the sheriff and his wife. And the entire episode is them having sex. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> it is the beginning of the movie. The wife gets her birth control removed, and we're told it's their third time trying for a baby. And they have 364 days to attempt it. And we go through like, and they basically do it every night. Like, no, it's not even basically every night. They do it every night. <laughs> Deadpool so, moment. So we're going through again and again. Like it's like scopes a hundred days, but it's constantly <laughs> them just having sex, basically. And awesome. uh occasionally occasionally uh we have cuts through where like one day it's called Freedom Day, which is the day when they beat the rebels who are trying to sca- who are trying to open the door of the silo and kill everybody. It sounds because like if you open the door, better. then the outside will get in. But like vertical. And, no, it's basically 1984 because it's like a super authoritarian state that that has control over all these people. And it's like they get to choose who gets to breathe. Like I'm gonna make a video documentary and post it to our channel. You know, it, uh, it sounds a lot like Snowpiercer though, but like vertical. Yeah, I, I think it actually probably is. It's a bit like Snowpiercer. Sounds just vertical. like a like an, so, It just sounds like a Black Mirror episode. So, yeah, the first thing actually we see about the wife is that she 
posted an article on how to recover deleted files. Then her Wait, boss. Where did she post an article to? Just to the forums. Like... There's just a oh, forums there for forums? everybody. There's just a, gl- a forums for everybody in the <laughs> silo to communicate. And she posted that, and it got deleted by her boss because her boss is like, "You have to run that by me before you post stuff like that because that breaks rules and regulations." Oh. I hate like, when that happens. And and he, and then later, this one lady, who is a like for like fertility supervisor or something, I don't know, she's like supposed to help you get pregnant, was like, oh, I can help you guys get pregnant. Turns out, she was just there to tell them that this whole silo is there to control them. It's saying, the judicial system, they're trapping us in here. They don't want us to get out. Mm, Damn. So basically, and then uh, then they have sex, and then uh, (laughs) then skips forward again, and she meets this other guy. This guy printed out her article on how to recover deleted files before it was deleted off. She actually, uh, he actually printed it out, and it was like, oh, it's super expensive to print stuff out. So that's a little tidbit we learned. This show has really good world building. It's actually, I'm, I don't think I'm explaining it well, but it, like, I'm making it sound really funny, like, and not bad, and like, bad, but this actually is not a bad no. show. It actually is really good. This um, kind of feels like kind of like The Wall from Solar Opposites kind of vibe, maybe. where it's like, you know, a society within like yeah. a, kind so, of like this one, limited yeah. space. It's, it's so so they, what, yeah. Very? So they get this... A uh, silo. Yeah. So they get this... Uh, they find this like hard drive that's like 150 <laughs> years old. So it's before the rebellion. So it's before all the records had been destroyed. Ooh. Ooh. And then they run it through and they find out how to open it. And they find blueprints for the entire silo. And they find out that there's a little tunnel underneath the silo that runs out somewhere. And she sleeps on that. Then they have sex. Mm-hmm. And then... <laughs> they come back, and then she eventually can't sleep on it anymore. And she's like, I can't stop thinking about it. She goes back, and she looks through all of it. No, actually, no. First thing she does is she talks to, that la- to the lady again. Yeah. And then she's like, you know why you can't get pregnant? Because they don't want you to get pregnant. You're not Ooh. the type of person they want you to get pregnant. Because in the beginning... They don't, get the, they don't want the sheriff and his wife to get pregnant? Yeah, because she's a rule breaker. She doesn't... She's not She's, she's going to pass down obedient. the rule breaker genes. Exactly. Dang. She's gonna raise this them. Is, to, she's gonna raise like her a, children to not be calm and this obedient. This is like a wish. <laughs> yeah, and then <laughs> because in the beginning we saw her, we saw we, we saw a doctor behind a curtain pull out her birth control, but later on she goes to the guy again, and we have a recording of somebody. Uh, something I neglected to say is everywhere throughout we have these windows that are actually just TV screens to the outside world that shows how the outside world is all is like dead and destroyed yeah. and destroyed but though it gets dirty all the time so every once in a while people have to go out and clean it and those are the people that say they want to go out because the one rule is that you don't say you want to go out because if you say i want to go out then you then you force to go out permanently you can never go back in mm. Ooh. so whenever somebody does that then they get to clean it so in the beginning we get a little thing like like oh it's been a long time since uh it's been cleaned and then and they were like, oh yeah, but that's a good thing because nobody's wanted to go out yet, so nobody wants to die because if you go out, it's basically a guaranteed death wish. Is it? Wow. Yeah. Is this it? um this world building really sounds really fantastic. You know, it's very yeah. interesting. Is it? Yeah, I'm just not explaining stuff in order. No, I'm really sounds, bad at explaining it, stuff. I think it sounds interesting. Explaining yeah. stuff and like you can kind of see like a couple dead bodies outside the window because you know after they clean the window they kind of just die. Yeah. Uh, why? And it's like it's like, but it needs to be clean so that people can see why they should stay inside. Interesting. Um, so then, after having sex, they uh, the lady returns to the person that had the hard drive and looks through all the files with him. And the last Ooh. file they look at is a video of the outside world. And, and it's, it's green. It's green. There's birds flying. It's blue sky. It's beautiful. And then the next, and then she doesn't have sex that night. <gasps> she says, she says, I don't, I don't really feel like it tonight. I'm really tired. That's Fuck. crazy. And then, for the rest of the episode, she no longer has sex. <gasps> She's given up. Fuck. Damn. And on top of that, <laughs> on top of that, the next time, they said, okay, we're going to go see the doctor because it's nearing the end of the time when they were allotted to start to try having a baby. The day they're going to have a baby, she doesn't show up to the doctor's appointment. The husband goes back, goes to her work. She didn't go to work. She said she's feeling sick. Comes home. 
and she is sitting there, and she says, "We need to talk." Mark, and that's how the episode we ends. Need, no, Mark, we need to talk. And then she starts beating the shit out of Mark, and then flies away and says, "Yeah, I fucked an alien." No, uh, what? His name's Mark. <laughs> sorry, I'm about, Mark. Sorry, I'm talking about Invincible. Uh, Guys, don't worry. No, don't worry. The date for the release date draws <laughs> next week. Yeah, it's that was so stupid. <laughs> okay, so basically they talk, and she's like, "Like I, I, they're not letting us have children, and I have proof." And then she reveals that she cut herself open and took out the actual birth control. They never actually took the birth control out of her. They didn't want her to have kids. Mm. So she's also bleeding out there. So then the husband Ouch. runs to go get the doctor, and then they both run back, and it turns out she's in the cafeteria. Uh-oh. So they go food. to the cafeteria, and she's doing a crazy rant, because the cafeteria is where the big window is, so it's where everybody meets, because that's where like the biggest one is that everybody can yeah. see outside. How long is this episode? <laughs> it's like an hour and something like I think he's, every episode is like an hour a lot of details. Long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I think I started watching it at 7, and I was done at 8.15. Wow. Um, and then... Uh, Oh, I neglected the part that the beginning of the episode is a flash forward of the sheriff inside the cell saying he wants to go out. Uh, and then it cuts backwards to his wife. So then she's in the cafeteria and she's basically telling everybody, like, they want us to keep, they want to trap us in here. We don't want to go out. And then the sheriff is, comes in, her husband comes in, and she's like, he's like, you're not feeling well. Please stop. You're going to get yourself killed. And then she said, I'm sorry, but I have to do this. I want to go out. Ooh. And that's the thing you can't say. Unless, and that's the thing you yeah. can't say. So then she's forced to suit up and go out. But before they have a time to talk when she's in captivity waiting for the day. And, and she says, she says, she basically tells him everything she knows. And she said, if I go outside and it's all green, I will clean the screen and walk over the edge. And, if I, and then come back and help you. If it's not, then I won't clean the screen. All right. So. Then that happens. She walks outside. She, she looks around. <laughs> she goes up to the camera and she cleans it. Wow. And she smiles as she locks eyes through the, through the camera at the, at the sheriff, at her husband. Yeah. And then she walks off, but then she collapses. But then she stands back up, keeps walking, but then she fully collapses and stops walking, uh. presumably dead. Mm. Wow, this is a lot of ground to cover for the first yeah. episode. Um, and then, <laughs> give me one second. And then there's more, holy shit. <laughs> I think there might be a tiny bit more. Oh my god. Okay, Nicola, I think a question we all want to know is like, how hot were the sex scenes? No, it's like no very one brief was sex asking scenes. for it's that like, already. It's, it's, it's not like I think we're all a lot. There, was, that. there is one that's like really extreme where it's like, like, oh, I'm going downstairs, so I'm not gonna have we're not gonna I'm not gonna be back tonight. So I guess we should do it now while we're both while you're at work. So they lock the door and screw on his while he's on duty, basically. And, <laughs> and it's the like, fucking secretary's are like No, literally. Mm -mm. That's literally no, that's literally the joke, because they're speaking super loud and all the people outside are like, good for them. Good for them. Good for them. Because it's a kind of like a big announcement if somebody's going to have a kid because, you know, it's like population control. Mm, yeah. So basically, the ending of the episode is then two years later, and the guy that, that the wife went to to find the hard drive, turns out he's dead. Damn. Mm. But somebody told them that it could have been murder. Oh, no. Was there a and remember, he still remembers that that uh, that his wife told him that the judicial system is trying to trap them in there because like she's constantly like running the water so that they can't be cured because they're being bugged and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So he remembers that, and then he goes downstairs to the engineering department where they're fixing the generator to the person who said he was killed, and meets Juliet, who turns out who is going to be I'm pretty sure from what I've seen going, he's she's going to be the main character mm -hmm. actually. Okay, mm -hmm. moving on. And that's how it ends. It wow. ends with them with uh, them meeting for the first time. This episode kind of just feels oh, no. like kind of like a no. Oh. I remember what it means. It it ends with them flashing back forward, with them flashing back forward, and uh, and it's saying like like you were so content for two years, but it all changed when you met Julia. Why? 
And then he was like, because I finally started listening to what Allison was, well, Allison's his wife, to what she yeah. was trying to tell me. Mm-hmm. And, then he, and then he was like, then, but why do you still want to go out? It's, you can see it's all bad. And he's like, because when I go out, I'll clean the camera and then I'll go, I'll go to Allison and I'll meet her there. And, she's, and he's like, but you can see Allison on the screen. She's dead. And he'll be like, yeah, you'll see. You'll see when I get past her. And that's the ending of that episode. Mm. This episode kind of feels like a prologue to the it show. It is. It's more definitely like, a prologue. This I'm feels sure. like it can't be more than like three episodes. It's eight all. episodes. Eight, it's eight episodes, episodes really. Eight. That's wow. not, they can't extend it that long. The I, episode's name, the first one is called Freedom Day. The second one is called Holston's Pick. I don't really care about the names of the episodes. Holston is the name <laughs> of the sheriff, by the way. Mm. Okay. Okay. Number three is called Machines. Oh my god, Number four we don't need the episode Truth. names, Nickel. Number five is called The Janitor's this Boy. This is going to be the Number six is called The Relic. Wrap it up. We're Number already seven is called The Flame in, Keepers. Bro. Number We're eight is called Tana. In? What is that? It's Nickel, I, just, I took as long as the actual episode. <laughs> Nickel, Nine is called The Getaway. Else. And episode 10 <laughs> is called Outside. 10? 10? Oh, wait, there's 10 episodes. Sorry, episode 10 is called Nick, Outside. Nick, talk about something else before we go okay, over. Okay, now is to the second things. thing. Now is the second thing I watched that both me and Beck can talk about. Oh, yeah, one episode. Don't worry. Has been Hotel. All right. Okay, okay. I need to know about this because I've been seeing this all over my feet. This fucking Has Been Hotel. Like, what, it's a show that one episode came out four years ago or it's something? That is my question. For Do games. they assume that you watched the pilot? Because I watched yes. the first episode. That's something I noticed. And I was insanely confused. What is the yeah, has that's I know. I, Yeah, that was, my first, that was one of my first reactions as well. Is like, they really rely on you knowing all these characters. And that's definitely going to bite them in the ass. Because I already saw a lot of the complaints is that they're not building these characters because they're assuming you already know them. Yeah, well, because this was an insanely popular indie YouTube thing, right? Yeah. What? And so this is the ago. first episode on Prime Video then. Yeah. I mean, but it's why, like, yeah, I don't understand why they didn't put the pilot also on Prime yeah, Video. I don't should. understand why they didn't do that. Because like, well, I mean, they you know, the f- because it's better than the actual show they and they didn't want to sell that contract. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> So, like, I decided to make this show five days it's ago. Basically, and I'm like, How it's basically, it's basically, it's a musical. It's like a kind of a musical show. There's lots of songs in it, and you, it's wait, about. You've only it seen follows, the first episode, right? I've seen all four episodes. Oh, well, I've only seen the first. Mm-hmm. The okay. first episode. I think the first episode is probably the is probably one of the weakest. Mm. I think the strongest one is definitely the V's. I think the V's that episode is the best. I think that's, that's either the right, second well, don't, or third don't, one. Don't don't talk V's about nuts. two, three, and four until I finish them. Okay. Because I, I will. Okay. Now I'll just talk it, about number one. No, I'll probably watch it by next week. So yeah. So we'll just talk about episode one because it's anyway free on YouTube. Everybody can watch it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, um. So yeah, viewers at home, you can watch. Actually, we can put the, our recommendations at the end. Yeah. Uh, our first episode is basically. We following Charlie Morningstar, who is the daughter of Lucifer. And Lilith. And Lilith, yes. So in the beginning, they give a little bit of an exposition dump of her reading the story of hell. It's literally, she's reading a book called The Story of Hell. Mm-hmm. And she's saying, saying, the angels created the earth. And they created Adam and his first wife, Lilith. But... Lilith was a rule breaker, and so was one of the angels, Lucifer. Lucifer and Lilith ended up meeting and falling in love. And they decided to give Adam's new wife, Eve, the forbidden, tr- the forbidden knowledge, the fruit of forbidden knowledge. And because of this, they were both cast to hell. But hell became filled because many people were going to hell. And heaven started believing. If they get too many people, then they're going to be able to rival our power. So every year, they send a bunch of angels to kill, to permanently kill a lot of the hell people. Because if you're in hell, you can't die because you're already dead. Yeah. Unless you're killed by these angelic weapons. Uh huh. Um, and then the rest of the show is following Charlie Morningstar, the daughter of Lucifer and Lilith, who has one goal, and it's to save her people from extermination by the angels. And her goal to do this is by rehabilitating them and sending them to heaven. Basically, if she can make them no longer sinful, 
and cleanse them of their sin, basically, she can send them to heaven. So she's doing that through her has-been hotel. And oh, then we is, meet... is this like an adult animated TV show? Yeah, like they swear. Yeah, that. they swear too much. They swear. They, they swear, swear so unnecessarily. They swear as much as your short film. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, it was... I was thinking, why would Nicola watch this kind of Owl House hotel ask was... TV show? Oh, I watched I guess it it's... because it was an indie thing I watched four years ago, and I'm kind of invested in it. So I it do kind of actually four watch years it. ago. <laughs> I think it was 2020. I remember, I'm pretty sure I remember it was all I saw was it. I saw there was like a MatPad game theory or film yeah, theory. Yeah, that's actually, I think, oh, and I also, I the it reason why oh, I this looks it. cool. There's also two. There's Has Been Hotel and then, yeah, and, and then Hell of a Boss. Boss. Same people, I think I watched right? Hell of a Boss. Hell of a Boss is all on YouTube, there's, but I don't, I don't same, like Hell of a Boss. It's the same universe. Mm. It's the same universe, but disconnected. It was released 2019, actually. That's oh, wow. five it's years ago. Wow. Jesus. Um, uh, I don't really like Hell of a Boss anymore. It's kind of gone off the rails a little it's bit. It's not like going. very much edgy. Uh, yeah. And, it's still and on YouTube. It's like on its third season. But it's kind of like, uh, kind of just like being edgy for the sake of being edgy, not like because okay. it can't. Like, it's like it's doing it because it's like, it's like, oh, we're an adult animation. We have to swear and stuff. And I think like the first episode also has that. Yeah. They start to get past that in the se- in the second, third, and fourth episode. Luckily, they don't do it as much, or at least maybe I wasn't noticing it as much. But okay. But I did feel. But I felt like the first episode had a lot of swears. But this after that, they were fine. After that, it was like, sure, there was like a little bit more than you maybe you'd expect. But like you can get past it because like you're like okay, you can definitely make the excuse like they're in hell, they're sinners, so they're gonna swear. Yeah. Fuck. But yeah, it rock. did felt a bit unnecessary. But this episode uh, was like, then, um, yeah, this episode was basically her going. Oh, do you want to explain? Uh, I'll, I'll explain like the rest of it. Yeah. I would give like very broad strokes so I don't spoil too much for Aiden. Okay, it's yeah. like she's like, okay, I'm gonna, I need to get this actually approved by like heaven because they're not just gonna randomly take these demons. So she goes to like meet with Adam, who's like an angel now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but first, she sings a song, and they, there were two songs in this episode, so it very much is a musical show, which you can't find a lot mm. of those. Um, it was a good song. Are the songs good? I, I liked the, the, songs, the two I in the really first the episode. Okay. Yeah. Did you like the two in the first episode? I did. Yeah, they were good. Yeah. And I think, honestly, the songs get better from there on. All right, yeah. And I honestly, like, the first songs were, the first two songs are good, but I honestly think the later songs are even better. All right. Like, like I'm definitely, like, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to put on a private session because I don't want this stuff showing up on my rap, oh, yeah, but I will be same, listening to the bro. soundtrack. There's so many things I'm like, I don't want this to show up under my, There's like, a way to put piece. on a private session so it won't show up on your on my rap, and I'm going to figure out how to do that, and then I will be listening to, to listening to it. Yep, there you go. I just figured it out. Yep. I hope it is <laughs> on... Uh, it is, it is... I saw it literally, it like, be. it linked to it when I, like, did the X-ray on Prime, so... It should be on Spotify. But yeah, no, she wow. meets with Adam and Adam's like, you know what? You guys, you're, you're bad people. You're never going to change. You're always going to be bad. Um, But also, we love killing you. So instead of coming back in one year, we're going to come back in half a year and kill you guys all over again. Good idea. Um, yeah. But then, wow. like, the big twist at the end of the episode is that um, they find a dead angel so there actually oh is my God. some Happy way Day, to you know kill the, first the angels. Happy Day in Hell? It was made by the same person that made Apex Predator and Stupid with Love for Mean Girls. Mm. Oh, that's cool. That's probably why the songs are really good. Because they're Speaking actually all being of... made by like actual Broadway people and stuff like that. Did you watch Mean Girls back? <laughs> I did. No. You actually did? I kind of wanted to see it when I go back to um, college because I heard... I haven't heard good yeah, reviews so actually. It was it was on it was for free on YouTube. So I watched it on there. Oh, I, 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 I the 2000, say, um, 2004 there is not one. An official... Oh, I thought you meant like, I thought you meant about like the new I do reboot, plan on music. watching the new one like n- like in the next 3 days. So I'll give you my thoughts on the new one next week. But for now, have you guys seen Have you guys seen Mean Girls? I've seen the first one. Yeah, we're talking about the first oh, yeah, one. Yeah, the original. Yeah, I have seen Mean yeah. Girls. Yeah, guys, yeah. I, this might be really sad. I don't think there's an official playlist out. Oh, mm. that's for Hasbro Hotel. Rip. This is really sad. Oh. Only, okay, the, yeah, only back... the songs that are already posted to like Prime Video's channel, which would be the, which would be Happy Day and Hell, the first one. Yeah. Um, Poison. Uh, oh, the shit one. 
which is the angel dust one. Uh, uh, the loser, which is the husk and angel dust one, and mm. then uh, rebel or what I think it's called like Rebe- rebel, and that's like the V's one. Uh, okay, so I watched the first Mean Girls, and like people like keep saying it's like um a modern classic is how they like describe it. And I watched it on my back. This was in 2000s, dude. Okay. No, the new one. No, no, I'm saying like it, I saw in like the ads, it's like the the retelling of the modern classic when it came out for the first time. Oh. I don't know. Okay. Like, um wait, the original? The original. The original was retelling of the, the original of like, the modern classic. I don't know. In the advertising the cl- for the new one, there's like the remake of the modern classic oh. Mean Girls. So I watched oh, okay. and I'm like. I did think it was good. It felt like um, very much a, a relic of the 2000s, which it did come out around then. Um, I think um, the most... It's the quintessential high school movie. Yeah, I know. Of, From yeah. what Holy I've heard, shit, they made like, a Lethal Company VR mod. It's a lot, like, you get a lot more out of it if you're an actual girl, kind of like Barbie. But actual like, girl, what do you mean by that? Okay, I mean, I, mean I wish girl. I was a real girl. I want to be a real boy. <laughs> um, if you're a girl, I think you get a lot more out of it. Um, okay. So, uh, I mean, I still liked it. I think the best part of me was like seeing like, um, the main girl start to become. The woman, the other mean girl that she hates. I thought that was pretty cool. I like when she gets hit yeah. by the car. That's my favorite yeah, part. The car was pretty funny. I don't like how they brought it back in the end. That one was kind of like felt cheap to me. But yeah, I mean, I don't see why people were like saying this is like one of like the, the best movies they've ever seen. It just felt pretty average to me. Well, there's a lot of nostalgia factor with this nostalgia, movie. Nostalgia. And know? also, like, it defined a lot of. Um, a lot of like what came after it so it's hard to like see it as like this groundbreaking thing yeah um but yeah well yeah it's i i think i remember watching like a few maybe like more than like maybe five years ago i think i've seen the movie like maybe twice or something like that it's a very it's a very it's interesting it's a very interesting kind of movie because like it's one of it's like the cult movie that we yeah. think of when we think of different high school movies like I don't know what, maybe Easy A, something like that, or uh, there's other movies, but um, there's like, it's one of the high school movies. There's other John Tucker Must Die and stuff like mm. that, you know? I, um, yeah, it's one of the movies, I would say, of 2000s. So that's why people think it's like one of the best movies ever because there's so many things. Like, we always wear pink on Wednesdays. That's still yeah. a thing, like, you know, you know? So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean,. I do want to see the new one. I do think it with music could be really cool. Yeah. Um, well, it, yeah. it is supposed it, to be a musical, right? But they didn't advertise such it because people wouldn't want it. as a musical, even though it is. Oh, I thought it was advertised as a musical. Okay. Well, they did, like, I think they, did they put, like, a music note for one of the A's one time? They, they did oh, have God. some stuff about it being a musical, but, I don't know, it seemed, I didn't mm. necessarily, like, because I saw, I saw, I saw TikTok was all like, I saw TikTok of people in the theater while watching the movie, and they were, when the when the first song starts playing, were, the audience is like, ah, oh, fuck. I don't get why people don't uh, like musicals. Musicals are higher. I like musicals. Yeah, back, back, back. Would the Owl House be enhanced if it was a musical? Yes. I don't know. Probably. It would be. It would. Do you listen to the Owl House soundtrack, even though it's not even like actual? They songs, um. But... There is, like, some music in some scenes that's really good, but it's, like, they don't, like, have, like, a public soundtrack to, like, listen to it. Okay, Beck, get through um, some of your quicker oh, topics. Oh, okay, um, not, you don't, you don't want me to go through all of them? I mean, just, just do the quick ones. Real quick. I'll do the ones Whatever you guys report. haven't watched first. Yeah. I'm okay. Quickly. Okay. Um, I watched American Fiction. Do you guys know that movie? Oh, I really wanted to see that. Was it as good it, as it I It was heard? really good. Really? So, the basic premise is, it's like this author guy, and he's like, my books, they're like, they're insanely good, but like, they're not really selling well. And yeah. then he sees this other author write an insanely stereotypical, like, black book, and he's like, you know what? 
I'm going to make the most stereotypical black book I can. And then he publishes it and then it becomes like a New York Times bestseller. He gets a movie deal. And it's just kind of like this absurd stuff about like um, how like stereotypes and like writing works and like people attracted to like the very simple image of people. It has yeah. it is like insanely funny. Like if you watch the trailer, there's a ton of good jokes in it. But there is like it's advertised kind of like as um more like a p- pure comedy, but there's like a ton of drama throughout all of it that's like a lot more emotional. So like I was thinking it'd be more like an 80-20 split. It's more like a 60-40 split between comedy and drama. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was. And in- does the does does the ending hit for the movie? Does it is a good no. ending? <laughs> no, uh, the ending is so weird because it gets into like three different layers of meta ness that are so confusing to what actually happens, what doesn't happen. Was the entire movie written by the guy in the story? It it got a bit too confusing for me at the ending, but I still think it was good. Wow. Um. But yeah, next thing on my list, I rewatched Big Hero Six. I've seen Ooh. Big Hero Six. You guys I, have. Seen. For me, I seen like, it. Yeah. I can see the very obvious glaring flaws in Big Hero Six. But I still Such really, really love the film. Such as the horrible plot twist and where he says, that was his mistake! It, that, yep. That. But yeah. I do love, like, no. the aesthetic of, like, San Francisco with, like, the whole, like, San Francisco mixed with Tokyo. Yeah. All the tech stuff they do is insanely cool. Um, the, like, actually, like, the villain using, like, a ton of tiny robots is really cool. I'm waiting for uh, it to be added into the MCU canon somehow. They do have a Stan Lee cameo at the end. It's like a post credit yeah. scene. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because it's based off like a Marvel comic it book, is. right? It yes. is. They changed so much. I remember here. I have watched a video about like Big Hero 6 and how it is in the comics. There's like four different iterations of them. Um, it's kind of interesting, but like some of the characters are like way more powerful or way different like honey lemon her purse rather than being like the sciency whatever is just yeah, a hammer really space cool. per- her purse is a hammer space purse so she can reach her hand in there and just grab anything out of the like she's like i want captain America. pull it out of it and it takes it from him yeah that's kind of broken <laughs> like i'd like to see something like that like i think they could do well in the mcu mainly just because i want to see more of them mm. and also i feel like Baymax in real life would be kind of cool, right? Maybe. I feel like Maybe. it works better animated. Oh, 100% yeah. does. It definitely not, should like, not be in the MCU. It should but not, But I think yeah. it'd be funny to be in the MCU. It would be funny to be like a one-off bit where it's just them in live action standing maybe like, there. Maybe like, maybe like a what-if. Like a what-if. I think they could do what well in what a cool what-if. I think you can tie them into there. Although, if you tie them into there and you the movie as like the base... It kind of makes it confusing because that it kind of is tied into Frozen a lot and is in the same okay, universe as that. And it's kind of confusing. It's I don't know. Tied into Frozen, bro. It totally is. What do you mean? Olaf is in the movie and Hans is in the movie. What? Yeah, there's a statue of Hans in the courtyard of Fred's house. Baymax blows it up with his fist. Oh, okay. I know the scene you're talking so about. So it was like Frozen, like the medieval times of. Yeah. No, exactly. That's, uh, that's like it's like it's like one of those stupid theories that just makes sense because of Easter egg cameos. Yeah, of course. And it's um, dumb. all right, but Aiden, you're acting like what if wouldn't make sense. Look at the last three episodes of What If season two or something. I mean, no, I'm saying it, it wouldn't make sense because then it would connect <laughs> to the other Disney a little bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. but um, Beck, let's do some more things. All right, um, the Dragon Prince. So this is like, it's a Netflix 3D animated TV show. Um, very much directed more towards kids. It it feels so much like net like Netflix was like saying to people, we need an Avatar, The Last Airbender, and someone took it a bit too literally. 
Mm-hmm. The um the main character of the show is voiced by the guy who does Sokka. They call their seasons books, just like Avatar. It's a kind of about the guy mastering all the different types of mage magic. Like they they they, they take a ton of ideas from Avatar, but they also try to do a lot of their own thing where it's like um this war between the nation of humans and elves and trying to like prevent that by like basically there's like the the dragon king is what stops them from attacking each other but he died so they need to get the egg which is like the dragon prince over to the elf side so they can stop the war um does this show hit mm, is it hitting or mm, no. average i don't know i'm hoping it gets good uh I mean, they have, like, a couple good episodes. There was, like, one where it's, like, the humans take down a dragon, and they're like, do we risk literally everything we have to save this dragon? And then one of them's like, yes, and the other one's like, no, and they start fighting, and then some guy gets paralyzed from the neck down. Uh, Like, it mm. sometimes gets, like, interesting like that, but a lot of time it just it doesn't feel that interesting. Um, And mm. then there's all the other stuff I was watching instead. But I'm on season three now, and there's only five seasons, and they're each like oh. eight episodes, each a half hour, so I think it'd be easy to get. Oh, through. is this show completed? It's not is completed. It I know they're ha- they have new seasons coming. That's why I kind of mm. want to finish it and be able to like see oh. see it I to thought, the end. I thought I thought the way you said it, I thought it was like a new show that came out or something. No, no, no. It's been going for a while. I just it's always been like I kind of want to see all the Netflix animated originals. And I'm like, I should probably just watch this. Exactly. But yeah. I, it's not hitting as much as as, as the other ones. Yeah. Like, oh, if yeah, you compare to gonna, other, gonna... like, animated offerings, this doesn't even come close. Back, back you're going to watch F for Family? I'm not going to watch F for Family. Back, is there been hey, any a... other animated series that has uh, takes place in a magical world that is far better than the one that you've currently okay can i get through a couple other things and then i'll and then the rest of my stuff is crossovers with you guys sure sure um does any do any of you guys know the tv show monk no uh i've heard about it. it's like is it a detective show? detective show so basically like, this is like an old fucking show dude. it is an old show and i watched all of it so it came all out in of like 2000 no 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 i watched i watched it before in the past like uh-huh. okay. when i was like in middle school so it's basically this guy, and he is like, is like, there's eight seasons, Bex. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> it was a long time ago. <laughs> it it was when I wasn't watching a lot of other stuff, but okay, okay. So it's basically this guy, and he's like, kind of a savant at like solving murder cases. He's like the best guy they have, but like. He's insanely afraid of like germs and everyone else, and he's like needs to like center all his forks before he eats. Like he has a lot of like um, OCD traits like that, so it's a bit hard like that. But that show ended a while ago. But for Peacock, they made Peacock. a new movie. Now the entire like premise of the show is like it could have it definitely deserved to have just ended there. It's like. The first one is like, you know, my wife, she died in a car bomb, and I have not been able to solve that murder, which is like the most generic thing ever. But guess what? At he the didn't end, solve the crime. He didn't solve the crime. But eventually, at the end of the series, he solves the murder of his wife. But wow. his wife had a kid. So we jump back 12 years after it ended, and um his wife's um basically his stepdaughter is getting married and he's like and like he's like a big like germ guy so they do a lot of covid (laughs) jokes where it's like he like he was insanely scared during covid everyone else is washing their hands like he used to do in the series wow Uh, i hate i hate i hate i hate shows that mention covid i hate shows that mention Uh, covid also but basically like He's like, you know what? COVID was so bad. Um, I solved my wife's murder. I'm gonna kill myself. But he has so to true. go. But he has to go through like his daughter's wedding, 
because like he doesn't want to kill himself before his stepdaughter's wedding. Yeah. So they go to a drama. <laughs> and then the day before the wedding, the guy is like, he's like interrogating this um rich Elon Musk billionaire, saying, "You murdered your business partner. I'm gonna expose the story." And the day after that, he's like, I'm going to go bungee jumping. So he goes bungee jumping. He dies, guys. No. He dies the, night bef- the day before the wedding. So sad. But Monk dies? No, not Monk dies. The, the husband. Oh. oh. The, the husband. husband is like an investigative journalism. <laughs> so the husband <laughs> dies, and then <laughs> Monk stepped out. I was like, Monk, I need you to solve the, the murder of my husband. She says Monk? Is his name Monk? His name's Adrian Monk. Monk. His last name's mm. Monk. She say, does she not say, Dad, I need you no, to solve this? He says Monk? I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. But he has to, like, solve the murder. And it's it was so obvious that the um, CEO billionaire did it. He just has to, like, find the evidence to prove it. Um, And so they do a lot of that. And then at the end, he's like... And you see all the characters from, like, the original show, and you're like, oh, it's cool, I remember that guy. A lot of, like, heartfelt stuff. And then it's like, Monk, you si- you solved so many murder cases, and then all the ghosts of the victims show up and be like, you solved my murder. Thanks, guy. Don't kill there yourself. You and then he doesn't kill himself, and he goes on to solve Wait, more murders. Wait, there's ghosts in the he show? Sees, like, he sees his dead wife a lot. But then this time, oh all the God. other dead ghosts come back. Well, like, not... It's like, it's, I think it's, like, mental. Like, he, like, sees them only in okay. his mind. This kind of sounds like something like Psych or something like it that. Is. Type it of show it or aired something. at the same time as Psych. So it was, like... Um, but It was kind of like a, a brother show to that. Um, But... It, so this is a show where, like, there's a new case each episode and stuff case, like that? A new murder case each episode... <laughs> And, like, a big twist to it and all that. Yeah. I really... Ca- but the thing about these like, kind of procedural shows, like, back, for someone who likes, like, a story-driven plot, like, doesn't this that just get old This was a long time ago when I watched them. So, like... And so you, you watched the movie. Since. But, like, they they did a movie. I'm like, you know what? I should probably watch this. I have Peacock now, so I'll watch it. Okay. So, anything else, back? Oh, I got... Uh, don't worry. I got... Um... Three more things that I don't think any of you guys have seen. Hunter Christ, Hunter. I'm not going to talk about Hunter Hunter. I'm Thank saving God. you guys the time. But I watched like 20 <laughs> hours of Hunter Hunter. So. Oh. Uh, well, you can only watch 14 extra hours of adventure. So time. true. Yep. I wonder what my next thing is. Adventure time? Adventure time. Let me, let me see which episodes I watched. Aiden he, is actually you engaged. He's on... He is in a streak of like peak episodes. I uh, he I did watch what Aiden considers the best episode of the show, right? Well, my favorite episode, at least the favorite best episode. episode. That, the, that's a good are, distinction. There are definitely some like banger ass episodes. Like I think Simon and or one of the Simon and Marcy episodes. Okay, I think I started last time with Card Wars. We started with Card Wars. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, 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 no. We talked about Card Wars on a call. I didn't talk about it on the podcast. Okay, well, whatever. Uh, okay, I'm going to start with um, Return to the Nightosphere. Oh, peak episode. Oh, this one is like they spawn in hell, but then they get out of the hell and they're like, no, Marcelin is trapped into hell. But don't worry, we're stuffing another episode in between the cliffhanger because we want to. Can you see they spawn in hell instead of they wake up in hell? Okay. (laughs) And it's like, how did we get here? You also forget that Jake is carrying a banana the entire time and is trying to figure out what the banana is for. Okay, but... That's it's like the weirdest thing. It's like you have you leave with this cliffhanger episode, like, okay, let's go to part two. No, you have another episode where Finn gets caught in a, a lamb statue and then has to help Ice King do chores. That episode is um, also good, but okay, but like, is he past me now or is he? No, I'm still, still behind. I'm still behind. Okay, then, I should guess what? We get the, the comeback. Um, of the part two twist. I actually tuned out for the past 30 minutes. I forgot I was here. <laughs> I completely spaced out. That's okay. Oh, don't worry. I was only talking about uh, Hunter Hunter. So, 
<laughs> then we get to the second part of the night of sphere where it's like um the dad tricked marceline into taking this amulet that makes her evil basically but no, then but Finn you, wears you the, forgot the part where they have to stand in line yeah yeah, yeah. no I, I think i deliberately left left that part out because no, we're I trying didn't. to save time no. i had to go through 14 the different things oh yeah okay um but yeah that that two-parter was really good uh then we have gotcha which i thought which is like lsp is like you know i need to write a book it's gonna be about how finn is gonna simp for me but then finn never simps for her and then she starts simping for him um yeah it was an okay episode that is a bit funny in retrospective but then we get card wars card and now wars! This, this is a really cool i flopped the pig i flopped the pig <laughs> which is a really cool idea for an episode where it's basically this like the two of them play a game of Magic the Gathering, and then Finn intentionally loses because he's winning too much and he doesn't want to make Jake because, mad. Because he flops the pig too yeah. much. He's, gonna, he's pulling out... He has a copy of Card Wars. Of course he does. Did you forget who we're talking about? Yo, is that Card Wars? I is... want... I want to I wanna, I wanna beat Aiden in this so badly. Because really I actually know how to, to play yeah, card games. Do I don't know how to play it. We but should I, I want to try and get like the we, whole collection because there are like card expansions and stuff. Ah, uh, well, like, I, they have card. They have cards from the episode. It is cool that they made them. the Husker Knight. There's Do they have the cornfield. Yeah, we should. Uh, we should. Play well, it yeah, that's like the play field. Yeah. All the right. Cornfield. Next you know one is Princess Cookie. We should. And I was like, that's a fire episode. It starts with a hostage crisis. She, um, Princess Cookie is threatening to, I think, murder the hostages. I don't really remember, but it's a big hostage crisis. And then we find out Princess Cookie was like, I want to be a princess. But then Princess Bobo was like, just started laughing. And then he's, I'm going to get revenge. And then Princess Cookie. Okay, cool. Okay, you're making fun of it, but this is actually It is a good episode. Right you can't forget that uh that uh Jake wanted to be the milkman and that Princess Cookie oh, comes that back was in really later funny. episodes. Really? Oh that's yeah, cool. she does. At least in the in the like detention center. Alright. Son of Mars. Yo, that's the first time that Jake died. No, this is the second time. This is the second time I that Jake dies. Back mm. back. Yeah, but they remember like each other. How many episodes have you watched? Because you can't describe every like billion uh, no episodes. Don't worry, I only have um three left. Episodes, and then you're done with what you have to say. Done with adventure Why can't time. you describe every episode? Don't worry. That's only, that's what if we have our first ever three-hour episode? That we have that, also. That, is, that isn't crossovers. All okay. right. Okay. Um, Son of Mars. I don't know. Pretty average. Uh, burning low. Insanely fire. I see why Aiden likes it so much. So okay. True. Um, Bimo Noir. I thought it was really funny, just like oh. the ending where it's like he's describing all the random stuff that happened, and it was like, the isn't is that the one that comes all the loot after the episode that's yeah. on the other perspective, or is that the it's one? The one, that, the white one. It's the one that comes after Princess Potluck. Yeah, and Princess Potluck is the Jake yeah. and Finn yeah. perspective. Yeah. Is it Jake we're... and Finn perspective? Yeah, what, oh, it comes after. It comes in the next season. Because, you know... Yeah, yeah. that's because like, I thought... There's an next, episode yeah. where they go to a potluck and Finn doesn't have his sock and Jake has the makeup on his face. Oh, so it is, like, taking place at the same time? Yeah, 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 which is cool. All right, well, it was a good noir parody. Yeah. Now, moving on to the next thing I watched. Yippee. Um... Killers of the Flower Moon. We talked about this a bit on the ranking episode. You watched it again or something? I didn't watch it again. That's I just I didn't I didn't get to say it in an actual episode that I, I need to watch it. it but it's three hours. I was actually gonna watch it last. I was gonna watch it right now, and then I remember yeah. now the podcast. So um, it is it. very long. I mean, in retrospective, it was pretty good. But I mean, in the moment, it's hard for three and a half hours, bro. I feel like it's a very simple plot, and they execute a lot about the um the like 
morality and the emotions of all the characters. It is probably going to win a lot of awards. I just don't get it. There were a lot of films that, like, I understood a lot more that I think deserve uh, awards more. Speaking of one of them, Holdover, The Holdovers. I oh. watched The Holdovers because I had Peacock. Yeah. Yeah. This, of all the films that are, like, probably going to be nominated for Best Picture, this is the one I probably think should win. Like this, wow. mo- this movie is so good. I yeah, I really liked it. Yeah, yeah. I, it is. It's very emotional. It lets you connect with like all of the characters. There's only really like three main characters, but it yeah. analyzes them all very well. And the drama between them is very realistic. A lot of good jokes. I think everything really hits in this movie quite it does. well. I think yeah, it's a ve- it's a very it's a very interesting movie. I thought like. The the main relationship between the teacher and the student very works well, and I really like the ending of this movie. Like you know, you know he he yeah he, he goes off to write the, the book yeah yeah, and so I feel like it's a very it's a very it's a it's a very good movie. It's probably it's probably not gonna be the one that's gonna win like I the know. award, but um at least the main actor he won a Critics Choice Award for like best actor for it, and so. he won a Golden Globe. Yeah, but uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it does, like, kind of suck, like, when, like, this so very much deserves to win Best Picture, but probably yeah. won't. Um, yeah. it's also, would, like, yeah. an insanely good premise, like, yeah. what happens to the people in boarding school who don't have, like, parents that they come back to? They, yeah. they have the holdovers. Yeah. It's really cool. And so I actually thought the when I first saw starring the movie, I thought um the thing was that is gonna be we were gonna follow the main group of kids. But yeah. then after the kids left, it was just him and the teacher. I yeah. Guess, I mean, yeah. I mean it, it makes did more feel sense. like they um they showed so much of the group the other group of kids that I thought yeah. they'd be more important, but they like never come back. They only they only have like one line in the ending. So it felt yeah. they they maybe should have gone a bit quicker to it just being the three of them, but yeah, yeah. But but those three really got worked and their acting was really good in the movie. Yeah, and um, yeah. I think this is a very. It's, I think it also kind of this movie also cements itself. I think it's a pretty good Christmas movie to watch. Oh yeah, um, it's a very I, good. I th- I would probably watch this at maybe every like on the holidays or something like that. It's a very good Christmas classic. Yeah, I mean it is like a very like sad that he has no one to go go to go with on Christmas. But yeah. Yeah, I think it does it is it's a very good Christmas review. You have the snow, you have all the Christmas songs. Um but uh, yeah, no, yeah. I guess Aiden, pick which one we talked about because the three I realize are all just with you. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about Ruby Gilman. Ruby Gilman, Teenage Kraken. Yeah. Now, so, this movie came out... How about you say it, because I've been last, talking. Last, yeah, I'll so it back. came out last year. It's a DreamWorks movie. It came out around the same time. Uh, The Little, and, the little Mermaid remake, right? No, no, Elemental. Oh. But it came out, it came out around the it same It came out the same year as The Little Mermaid remake, which is important. Yes. So this yes, so this movie is about a kraken living on land, and there's a mermaid, and she looks like Ariel. Exactly like Ariel, like it's funny. Yeah. So uh, the movie is kind of generic in its plot. Um, it has like three fucking stories within it. Like you get a third, ma- you get a third act misunderstanding within the first thirty minutes, and then you have a second one, and then you have a third one. So it's kind of a little bit all over. And kind of boring in the second half, but the animation is really exactly. good. I like how, I like how all the characters move. That all of the like character designs are very good. I like how lanky everybody is. Yeah, the, like, except the, for that, the stretchiness except of for all the, the characters one, is cool. I like the one guy friend who's just like a a bra a uh, like a brick. He's just a big old guy with a tiny ass head. I like that guy. The guy with the switch. Yeah. Yeah. This is a big ass body, tiny ass head. Funny mm-hmm. character design. Yeah, no, they have they the whole world has a cool design to it. Like just looking mm-hmm. at like the buildings was really cool. Like the way they're all designed, yeah. they all fit into this ocean theme. 
Mm-hmm. They have like the giant like giant bus tour yeah. that's just a giant ship with wheels on it. Definitely, whenever it wasn't on land, it was kind of bland looking. Oh yeah, no, whatever than the ocean, I hated it. Yeah, they, they had, like, like no overall. Cr- Pretty okay movie. I enjoyed it. I enough. don't think it deserved to underperform as much as it did because, like, I did not hear no. anyone talking about this. No. Yeah. But I, I, I enjoyed it. I like Ruby as a character, and the, I mean, the, the plot twist is bad. Yeah. But very predictable. It, yeah. But enjoyable nonetheless. Yeah. No, I did. I did enjoy it. I watched it all the way through. I have. A, I did also but, do that. What was crazy to me was that was the same night I watched another show. And when I was watching the movie, I was like, hmm, one of these characters sounds very familiar. Wait, hold yeah. on, give me a second. Hold on. <laughs> you got where I'm going here, Aiden, right? Give me a second, hold on. Is this Molly is McGee? It gonna be, is yeah. it going to be the... Who so the owl? F- who? Which, who? Which character? The, the best friend is Jinx. Oh, so she is. Yeah. I'm like, this sounds right. exactly like Jinx. And I'm like, is it? And then after a bit, I'm like, literally, this is just Jinx. You're so right. Okay. Anyway, so now we're talking about the Ghost that of Molly, Molly McGee. McGee finale. So, it's Beck, just to finale. recap, tell us what Molly McGee is in wow, the finale. Wow, it's a ghost becoming and... friends with a human. But wow. I just told you a lie, because in the finale... They changed the okay, name of the hold show. On. Okay, so the fir- there's two. There's the season. What was supposed to be the season two finale, yeah. and then they got canceled. And they're like, "Shit, let's do the actual series finale at the end." Can we do that, Disney? And Disney's like, "Okay, it's here's episode twenty. So obvious. Like, yeah. See, the season two end is like we could end it like here, new season, but then they put one episode, literally just tacked on the end that like resolves." the conflict so it was, yeah. it's, it's very obvious so the first the season two finale it was okay it, i uh, i don't like main, it when they try to do all the plot stuff it works best on like one-off episodes i think that's true the uh, the main villain of it is kind of stinky i don't really like her it was a whatever season two finale yeah and then the actual real finale was really was, fucking good it was probably the best episode of the show if me and Beck weren't watching it together, then I think we both would have cried separately. Yeah. Which is kind of <laughs> sad. Yeah. Yeah. This is why we have, so, we have to watch finales apart now. So why so, was it the best episode of the show? I want to preface this by saying I've been right since season one. My prediction has been correct since the beginning of season one. I had no idea, like, the twist. Is this, for some reason, this it background planned out, like, the entire past two seasons. I know the entire plot twist. This is, oh, there's a background character, and he looks really similar to the ghost main character. And in the back of my head, I'm like, this is, like, this guy's body, and it's his soul disconnected from it, because this background character is, like, super depressed all the time. And that's my, that, that's what I've had in, like, while and then in the episode it's about him actually he's not a ghost he's actually a wraith and his soul left his body and it's like whoa and i was right all along yeah so the main thing is it's like this guy and he has this friend and the friend is going off doing all these crazy funny adventures and he's just like sitting at home seeing all that happen and it's very sad because he's just doing nothing with his life and he ends up doing it. He's scared that he's gonna die. Yeah, and then he, and then, but he ends up wasting his life. And they sing a really sad song. It was a really sad song. And then he just becomes yeah. so depressed that his soul just leaves his body and becomes <laughs> basically a ghost. Wow. Yeah. And then over the entire what, course, you, was of this the, like a flashback you got in the episode or something? Well, like, like a little flashback over, song. Like, yeah. The past like season two, they've been like he's getting his memories back from like before he died. And it's like the gr- the friend. And then this episode, they're like, he gets a bunch of flashbacks to like, I, all this like cool, crazy stuff I did with my life. Then he just realized that was what the other girl was doing. And he was just seeing the yeah. photos of them. 
So it's really mm-hmm. sad. He's like, I think I did so much with my life, but then he realized I did nothing. And then he's given yeah. the chance to go back into his body, but he, he has to leave behind his new life, his like one that he actually like enjoyed family and friends and stuff. His ghost life. So he yeah, his ghost he'd life. lose all his memories. Yeah. So this guy just constantly losing his memories. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but then they like say a tearful goodbye, and they say a line from the opening theme song of the show. They do say that. Yeah. Jesus, that must have Beck must have been crumbling not to cry. He was like, no, 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 that was me. I was crumbling not to cry. I literally turned to Beck when the song was over. I'm like, <laughs> he's like, no, yeah. No. So she goes back into the body, and then. We see him, and the body's now all very happy. Then he walks past Sad all the... Jolly guy. Yeah, and then he walks past all the characters in the show, and he doesn't recognize any of them. Then he boards the bus and is like, I'm gonna go live my life. Except he says Molly's catchphrase yeah. and her name, oh. or his nickname that he gave to her. He... So he does have some sort of memory within the back of his yeah. head. And I do think... Like, looking at, like, seeing the ending now, you can, like, really see what the general, like, premise of the show was. It was, like, this guy who's, like, done nothing with his life meets this girl who, like, does everything and then brings him back to life, metaphorically and literally. Whoa, crazy. Shattering is insane. They planned this from day one, which is, I actually love, they literally did plan this from day one. Like, it wasn't like some they random twist they threw in there. They had that guy in the background of a ton of random episodes. It fits yeah. so well thematically. It was an insanely good finale. Yep. Was it the best finale in it television history? It was not history? the best finale in television history. Or... Yeah. It was... oh, but it, wow. was, it was fairly good. Yeah. Okay. I think it was the, a good ending to it... the show. Where it does was... it rank in, like, the finales of, like, Amphibia, Owl House, Ooh. what else? Uh, other... It's Craig it's... of the Creek. Oh, well, that's a completely different show. Yeah. But it's better just... than Craig of the Creeks. Well, no, because the finale's the movie, and the movie's pretty good. I don't know. I mean... It's hard to rank those. You deal with a lot of bittersweet endings. Uh, It kind of felt a lot it's, like... Um, Gra- it's closer to the Amphibia. Amphib- where, like, they both have to yeah. leave everything they've known for the entire show. Yeah. So it's definitely on par with one of those, rather than the Owl House. Like, the Owl House is... Damn, that was a happy ending. No, that they was, got literally everything they, they wanted. Yeah, but Bye. this one is like, so yeah. It's, damn, it's like it's not. It's, so it's not like sad. Like, but it it it, it was sad for me because you know yeah. I love the show. I liked these characters. Yeah, it's as bitter as sweet as a lemmy dripped in sugar. <laughs> sure is. Yeah, so but true. yeah, no, it it was a very tearful goodbye. Yeah. Um, well, Beck, what else have you been watching? That we Teddy Bear swears. Up? He says fuck a lot. He smokes the weed. What? This is Ted, baby! <laughs> you, you are, I'm not just anyone watch Ted. You watch, also Ted, watch Ted, baby! Hold on. So, so this show came out. Ted. So, let me, before we talk about Ted, let me tell you about my woes with fucking Peacock, all right? <laughs> yeah. So I got Peacock just to watch Ted. This is the only reason I have Peacock right now. And I was like, well, while I have Peacock, what other shows are on Peacock? Fucking nothing! There's nothing on this goddamn streaming service! What about, what about Parks and Rec in the office? Were Holdovers, Ruby Gilman, and um, Ted. So I watched it. What about, uh, what's the point in having Peacock? What, yeah. what, what's the, what about The Office and Parks and Rec? I don't... We'll probably rewatch The Office. I'll watch Parks and Rec. I'll probably watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine. What also, I? I haven't seen that. Yeah, no, it has so those pro- shows. Like, that's, the other, that's the only other thing. It's like those kind of sitcom-y shows. Yeah. Right. And then the only other thing besides those ones I want to watch is um, Twisted Metal. No, no, Twisted Metal. So wait, ha- did you watch the first Ted movie? I've seen the first two. I've seen both. Ted I haven't, and I watched the show, and I still loved it. It's perfect because this the show is way better than both movies. No, because like the really. first movie is good, but like, like if you've seen the first movie, there's a lot of stuff in the prequels that kind of parallel. Stuff. No, like I watched like, like the first one. I'm like, wait, they watch um Flash Gordon in this. I'm like, oh, that's a cool callback to the. 
prequel. Well, there, there's uh, like in the in the first movie, there's a part when um, Johnny goes up on stage at a concert and like confesses his love to his friend, really? and that's something kind of. And he that is, there's like a parallel to that in the finale where he gets up on the at prom. I'm a virgin. So, all parallels to some stuff in the in chat. The, so true. So tell us why this is just as good, better than the movies. Wait, Seth MacFarlane is still in this show, right? He's still, yeah, he, he wrote Seven. it. And yeah, he okay. wrote it. And yeah, he, wrote, he also now, wrote created the show, right? I yeah. assume. Okay. Yeah. Now this show is a family sitcom set in the early 90s. Kind of like a young Shelton. <laughs> not like a young <laughs> Shelton, not at all. Now, this show is kind of fire. Like, it's super well-written. Like, all of the characters work really well with each other. They're all, like, they feel like a family. They feel feel like characters in a world. Yeah. Rather than, like, look, it's a teddy bear that does weed and says fuck. No, he's, like, actually funny. And like the comedy comes from the from the dialogue between these characters, yeah. rather than just shit happening. One thing I'd like to say is af- after having experience having to put people into environments digitally, I have so much respect for the people that actually got Ted to interact with all this stuff. It's oh yeah, insanely I think he, hard. it was like three thousand VFX shots. Like um, I yeah. heard for like Ted Seth MacFarlane or see something. That. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's insane. Um, but yeah, but, let's go through yeah. the plot of each episode. <laughs> episode one. Ted wants to get kicked out of school, so they do we. Episode two. The bully has no dad, so they pretend to be his dad. This one was so sad. <laughs> it's funny. It's, really really, funny. it's a funny episode. Was the, the bully, that sounds like a really funny the, They bully the bully, and the boy's like, the bully tries to kill himself by eating a big jar of like the Flintstone gummies. <laughs> so <laughs> that's really funny. It's like that one magician that was like, "Yeah, well, I'm like your dad. Your dad disappeared, isn't he?" Ooh, yeah, wow. that's for real. No, this show sounds like it's hitting so far. No, we this show's ten, really fucking three. <laughs> this did show is really... once. Yeah, I did. I watched episode one and then binged the rest of the season season in one day. Wow. Okay, episode three. They try to rent a porn, and then so they true. need to like get the porn back. <laughs> that one's also a really good episode. Okay. See, it sets up the porn addiction in later in the series in the movie. That clip, right? right? He does have a porn addiction. There's so much porn! That okay. does make sense. Episode 4. Episode. I want to talk about, like, <laughs> a bit more specifics of this. Ted goes to a Halloween party and then they leave and then they go to a professor's house but the professor wants to fuck Ted. So, true. <laughs> Ted... I want to make love to you. And he's in a oh. full bear costume. <laughs> he is in a full bear costume. That one's... That, the subplot of that one is that some guy gets invited over to Johnny's house, like, 30-something-year-old guy, and he's just like, he just, like, fucks around. And he does crack. <laughs> yeah, it's a very awkward episode. Next episode. John's mom becomes a teacher. Yeah. Next episode. That one was so weird because I thought, hey, for the first half, it's going to be therapy. But then they swap. No, is this her going to be a teacher? Yeah. All right. How are the other characters in this show other than John and Ted? There's really like five characters that are important. There's John and Ted who are really good. Yeah. Like the actor for for John is really funny. He also plays Baldur's Gate, which gives him my respect. So true. And then the other characters are the mom and dad, both of whom I don't really like that much. Yeah. And then there's the cousin, Blair, who's kind of awesome. She's really cool. She is. She, um, she deals weed. That's, that was the plot. She, the does, she, she, she does deal weed and is a lesbian. That's also an important plot point. Yeah, that's wow. in episode six. And you want to do it? Yeah, episode six. Blair is lesbian, and the truck comes alive, and the truck the, uh, truck is homophobic because he's closeted, just like Nicola. <laughs> I'm not closeted. And then episode seven, the finale: John has sex, but <laughs> he doesn't. He gets cut by OJ Simpson. That was the funniest the part of the episode. <laughs> 
So no. Okay. So John is about to have sex with the woman of his dreams. But then the TV comes on. OJ Simpson is running from the police. And the girl is like, no. we gotta focus on OJ Simpson. I can't have sex with you right now. OJ Simpson's running away from the police. <laughs> God, imagine being cut by O.J. Simpson. This show is, like, it's good. It has, like, thoughtful, like, actual moments of, like, family sitcomness, but then it's also just really fucking funny. Like, every episode has at least one joke that stands out above the rest. Like, episode one is is the Indian kid joke. Oh, yeah. That one's funny as fuck. <laughs> they got him. Oh, we it had sounds like... <laughs> we had an it Indian sounds kid like one, one of the... <laughs> It sounds like one of the exceptions to, like, the prequel reboot of, like, an old franchise. Yeah, no, like, it breaks the Young good. Shelton effect. Oh, like, I talking, like, iCarly reboot or, like, I other stuff. I sincerely hope they retcon the movies just so, like, this series can stand alone I know. and be its own thing. Because John in the movie sucks ass, and he's so cool in this no, series. I found out that he gets her girlfriend in the first movie, and I'm like, no, I want him to get with the girl who likes Flash Gordon. Yeah. Let's also do an Aladdin carpet right on top of a car. That's funny. Oh. I like the I like the Jesus piss joke. That one's funny. Oh, where yeah. he can't yeah. where he can't pee, and then the guy says, "Take all the time you need." And wow. There's also a subplot where Ted is Jesus. And that one's funny. They also joke about that literally in the movie, and I'm like, oh, it's a reference to the prequel. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds um, yeah. really good. I'll definitely watch it. Um, that was the only watch. reason I bought Peacock, and it was so good. I'm so glad I did it. I kind of want to rewatch the show. I think I literally <laughs> saw a tweet that was like, "This is Peacock's best performing show ever." I'm like, it literally, is. Like, what is it comparing with, bro? <laughs> There's nothing to compare against. Office reruns. Back reruns of the Office. This is a super fan episode of season seven. Yeah, yeah. Um, back. Be anything else, or can we move on? From um. You? Well, I think we yeah. literally got through all 14 different things. Oh, I watched it's one episode of Sex Education, and I don't want to talk about it. Okay, it's, perfect. It, I just, it's not enough in to talk, actually talk. Okay, I guess I can talk about what I've been watching. Okay, I have, like, one more thing and then, like, three stories. Okay. Oh, okay. I have you want to do an in-focus story? story? In-focus no, story no, back? You don't need an in-focus story. It's, it's, like, one minute. Okay. So, <laughs> on Wednesday, my teacher was like, hey... We're going to be doing it. Um, journalist of the Year, a.k.a. Joy. So I'm like, you know what? I am the Journalist of the Year. So I say, put me in. I got this. Uh, and then we had the voting today. I was up against two other people, and I lost. And it was sad, because I'm no longer the Journalist of the Year. Wow. Are you, you the suck. second or third journalist? I'm probably second, I think. I don't okay, know. Well, they they you know they do say the second place is first loser, so fuck oh, you. Okay. True. But like the thing is like to win journalist of the year, you need to win first the classroom, then the school, then the state, then the nation, then worldwide. And I feel like if but, I had beaten just the class, I could have gotten to worldwide. Beck, are you sure storming didn't get you there? The storming of the number nine. It was like no, 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 it was like the um it was like watching our portfolios that we had to make for like our front our um final. I did not put a lot of work into that. So Here, let's, let's let's dox who got the journalist of the year. Say their name, back. Uh, Anish. Would a uh, dessert deserved in my opinion. He does. He does. I think he, he does like the most work out of anyone in the class. He deserves it, except for Ben, yeah. of course. Except, except for, for me, back. yeah, no, I I do ten times the work. I don't. Wow. Yeah, you make you make the graphics for this show. And you make the graphics. That that's way better than editing all the shows, leading the class. Who needs that? Yeah, fuck them. Before um, wait, hurry, sorry. Before we move on to you, can I tell my cu couple anecdotes sure. before we go yeah. on to continue more? Only if all they right. have the word pussy in it at least once every story. Right. So uh, the other day I was scrolling on Max because Max kind of is in a, in a slump right now. There's nothing on Max, right? They have put this... Avengers rain. Come on, well, Nicola. Um, I, I put this in the chat. I, am going to I put this in the this. chat, I believe, because it was really fucking funny. Oh, yeah, the that top, was funny. The top 10 movies for today. Let's hear them. So we had Barbie. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, CNN film Chowchilla. Chow I what? don't know what that is. 
Wait. Uh, <laughs> next movie, Ted 2. Okay, Ted's popular right now. And this Plus is people. Peacock just doesn't own Ted 2 when they made the yeah. entire show. And, yeah, so now people are copying. What are the next couple movies? It Comes at Night, sure, a horror movie. So the A Team. Okay, the yeah. A Team, whatever. Alvin and the Chipmunks, the Squeakquel. Why are you there? The Squeakquel? Uh, yeah, the White House, edition, The Return of the King, Extended Edition, Road Trip, Scooby Doo, and Crypto Two. What? Who's wa- what? Who's watching these movies on Mac? Okay, Why are these the top White House movies down, of the day? They take the White House, but no, then they have to take Aiden, it back. I'm surprised you haven't watched any. I'm surprised you didn't watch Crypto the the dog thing. Um, no, the that's okay. Crypto, Scooby Doo Crypto Two. That no, seems like your cup okay. of tea. Maybe, Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. The thing I don't get what DC like does DC just do a ton of crossovers with some random stuff? Because I don't know if you guys do. You guys know what Ruibi is? Yes, we know what Ruibi is. Ruibi. So they have like a whole movie crossover with like the DC people. Mm-hmm. How does like an animated web series crossover with like DC superheroes? It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It's like the most confusing crossover I've ever yeah. seen. Heck. Do you like the music in Ruibi? There's a, oh, I do like caffeine. That's the one. Right. Did you know one of the people that does the music for Ruibi actually performed at a symphony that I went to? Did they do caffeine? No, it was Sonic music. What? I went to a Sonic the Hedgehog symphony, and it was crazy. Wow. Yeah. Did yeah. you do Bugs Bunny? Uh, what do you what do you mean that they do bugs bunny okay that's an opera um okay um sorry um yeah continue is that it sympathy one was it awesome it was awesome they played music and it was awesome uh what's the third one i, w- I was on the news that one time Aiden <laughs> on on our local news television. Station. here i'll show it right now okay yeah um, oh that's yeah. crazy transition no way <laughs> But wow, yeah. Aiden, so you can you tell me the story of like so your your the story worked out it got closed but then come back I'm confused. So it was going to close. The owners didn't want to deal with it anymore. We weren't making that much money. But then new owners came through and they're like I'd like to purchase this place and then they purchased it and we're staying in business. Nice. Wow. And so, to keep this job. Yeah, and so the news came through and they're like, "Hey, you're a small little store and you had just a little a little thing that happened to you. Let's talk to you on the news so they interviewed the new uh cfo and other some customers and they talked about the store and i was in some b-roll footage yeah i'm, sure I'm so sweatshirt. angry that they didn't interview you aiden you know well, i mean i didn't want to be interviewed really i don't i wow. don't know what to say no it's really nice that the store has been saved i think i can still have my job and um yeah, yeah. i can afford I the I money did interview to you at the store. i interviewed you once and I used B-roll from you from the store for your focus uh-huh. package. Wow, it was about cool. yeah. But I guess um, Aiden said that one other thing other than the story. Do you have the other thing or? I mean, I have what I was something else I watched. Okay, tell us. Uh, so I got really bored and really tired. So it's funnier to watch when you're tired. Oh, I have an idea. Adult Swim infomercials. <laughs> now I'm Are not sure if you're Max. They're on Max as like a like a th- as like a series. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen any of them, but they're little short films. They're like in- they're based on like infomercials. A couple of them aren't, but most of them are. And usually they're they're comedy, but some of them go into like a dark. Like you'll like it's definitely the you're watching this at four a.m. and you're high as fuck and it scares the shit out of you and you think you're dead. It's mm. like that kind of shit. So a couple of the good ones that I watched are Broom Shakalaka. There's this, it's like some guy showing off this really cool broom and then he cuts off his hands and go and everything goes to shit and his daughter gets revived because they sell enough brooms and then he comes back to life because they sold. That one's pretty cool. Um, another good one is unedited footage of a bear. That one is like about an allergy medication, but like is like about drug use and like, Oh, like a drug addiction? Or are these infomercials as far as like a show or just random infomercials they're, they created? They're, they're, yeah, just stuff that they created to just like show on different blocks on Adult Swim at night. Okay. Um, another good one is Too Many Cooks. 
That one's a pretty famous one. It's one of the only YouTube videos with some title font. Uh, um, that mm-hmm. one is just like a big long intro to a TV show that like it slowly gets more deranged, starts glitching out. There's a murder through and starts like killing the cast members. Uh, my favorite one is this house has people in it. Uh, I don't really want to explain that one. You guys should go watch because that one's house really that one's in really it. freaky. And then wow. there's just there's a couple other good ones. There's one about like a like dogs getting super buff or like goth <laughs> guru something. So I don't know. I'll probably keep watching all of them because they're all thing, and they're all okay. they all kind of get fucked up at the end. But some of them aren't yeah. as fucked up as the others. Well, um, all right, I, I'm not gonna, I like I need, one thing, one topic. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, the Last of Us Part Two casting. Yeah, I want to really talk about news. that because okay. I actually know the actor that plays Abby, not like in person, but like from okay. Book Smart. Uh, you Book Smart, Booksmart, right? I've seen Book Smart. Yeah, um, I, I think as, I, I think build wise, maybe not. She's probably a good muscular, but I think face wise, it kind of works for her. Face wise, I, I don't, I, I don't know. I think it's yeah. as close as you can get face wise. Well, you get the actual face model, but <laughs> do you think she'd want to do that again, Beck? I probably not. Okay, Beck, yeah, no, that in, is Beck. Do you know how much fucking hatred this actress is I gonna know. get? That's I feel so bad for her. She's gonna have to deal with so much hate. It's crazy. But yeah, you, I mean, like the build, I do not get it. Like I saw this girl in Booksmart. I do not imagine her as someone who can grab a golf club, beat a grown man to death, and then punch zombies. That does not sound... She does not, like, look like an Abby to me. I feel but, like in, in Booksmart, it doesn't work, but I've seen her some other things, like, other things where it does work, because where she's more, like, kind of, like... There's one where she's, like, a drug addict and, like, dope, dope sick, and, and um, that one I, it has more of the look to it, I would say. She's, like, a minor, too, in that show. Uh, but, yeah. um, yeah, I feel like it depends on... You're probably seeing her from, like, a kind of, like, book smart. So, I'm you seeing know. her as, like, a high school senior. I'm not seeing yeah. her as, like, this grizzled yeah. zombie apocalypse veteran. Yeah. And then she we could got... definitely pull it off. Yeah. Um, but what is cool is they got, um, the original actor for, um, Jesse to, rep- to reprise his, his role. So it's literally just gonna be exactly Jesse from the games in the show. Ooh, Jesse? Um, yeah, uh, he's like um, Dina's friend. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, yeah, so that was cool. Did they cast Dina, right? Did they? Yeah, they did cast Dina. They cast Dina, and that was the actor who played Dora in the Dora live-action movie. Wow. Uh, Beck, I don't know what to, to tell you, but um, you're wrong. They didn't get the I'm actor not- for Jesse. No, I swear they did. They didn't. They got they got the guy who plays him in the game is Stephen Chang. The guy they got for the show is Young Mazino. Who is in Is it deep. his face model then? No. I swear. When you looked when you put them side to side, they look like identical, bro. Wait. Well, I guess they got they cast well. Wait. Jesse Last of Us 2 game. Yeah, okay, wait. No, okay. I I swear it's the same actor. It's not Beck. Well, moving on from oh Beck's fuck up. Um, I guess I'll get into what I've been watching. I won't since we are a bit tired here, you know, it's a bit late. I won't go too long. I'm not gonna Beckify this uh high school musical the musical I series. Do. Wow. But um I'll just talk quickly. It's just maybe two things. I Quickly, I will say I did finish Beef. I started it like a long time ago, but I actually finished it because now it's an Emmy winning award show. Um, both main actors, and it's like you know, road rage incidents where both people become obsessed with each other and like they kind of we follow both of their lives. Very good show. But what I have been watching is the Percy Jackson show. So that's what I have been watching. Oh, yeah. The episodes have been coming out weekly, and when I first, it's been like four episodes has come, three episodes have come out since then, and I'm gonna say, guys, it's not a very good show anymore. No! It's not, oh, 
Bro, this is okay, so sad. Kids cannot get a good show to save their lives. Okay, the thing is, um, here's here's how I'm gonna present this. So, like, we all know there's because like the act, author he infamously hated the movies. He said this is the definitive version, but there's been coming up this 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 gradual theme that a lot of people have been noticing. I've been seeing this very common theme of. This is a Reddit post that this is a common Reddit post I see on the Percy Jackson TV show subreddit. Guys, it would this be show on is... the Percy Jackson TV show subreddit. So true. Where I've been seeing, like, you know, this guy's show is not hitting. And this show is actually here's a comment. So here's the theme. So people are not liking this show so much that they're actually going back to the movies and they're like, so this they say, no. you know. This movie, the this show is not like funny. The cadence, the characters are not like working. And then, while obviously the movies aren't adapt, aren't good adaptions, they are good movies. And they wish that the show was like the movies, except just more adapted, the better. And they're missing the kind of the the rhythm of the movies. And they say, wow, they're not very good like adaptions. Um. They're very good, like, they're very good. They're good movies. Not Maybe not the second movie. The second movie is kind of ass, but the first movie people like as a movie, but not as an adaption. And this is kind of further cemented, I would say, definitely in episode six, because episode six has the casino scene. And in the movie, it's a really, it's, it's one of the movie's good scenes, where they play Poker Face. And then I, a lot of people really wanted Poker Face to be in the show. But they didn't do it, and there's even, like, a tweet from, like, Rick Riordan, who wrote the book, and he's all like, guys, as much as I love Lady Gaga, I'm not giving a single thing from the movie in the TV show. Uh, and then he said, normalize bad movie erasure in, um, in this tweet. I love Lady Gaga. Did they? And so, she makes, I love and the Gaga so, song. Did they play the, like, what the fuck did she know about clocks? They played the song Poker Face in the casino scene? In the, in the movie, and people really like that scene. It's a very, um... It's one of the iconic scenes of the movie. And then they didn't um, have the song in this and everyone got mad. Yeah. That's but um so stupid. <laughs> But the thing is about they're missing while they while Ricky Warden says some more faithful adaptions, they are missing a lot of just kind of the fun of the books. Oh yeah. Like I'm just the characters are not hitting as well. Like it's like I feel like nothing happens each episode. And like they're kind of they're he says more faithful adaption, but they're really getting a lot of a, a lot of stuff. He has said this is going to build like a foundation because, like, unlike the movies, which kind of abruptly ended after two books, there's five books. There's gonna be five seasons, and so if it's doing this, if it's not being good in the first season, I don't think they're green lighting another four. No, no. In fact, they will. It's been getting a lot of views. And really, the views are when Matt. Yeah, it's getting millions of views. Mm. Um, it opened to like seventy one, I think. Oh, so man. We want yeah. yeah. And um something like that. And so then it's 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 a game of views because it's a very famous IP, but and so but I'm seeing a lot of comments where people are just not enjoying it because they don't feel like anything really happens in the episode. And to be honest, I agree. I don't think I feel the characters are more accurate, but I'm just not getting as much as fun as the movies had, you know? Yeah. So it's kind of a counterbalance. I think, like, they're going to have to probably do some serious kind of working more. Because maybe not that the actors have grown a bit, they'll feel more in their characters in season two. But, um, I don't know. So far, it's not been ending very well. And so that's just my quick review. I, there's only, like, I think one or two more episodes left. So, yeah. For um, me, I thought episode two was a great improvement on episode one. I liked, you know, when they did the thing at the place. But did then you season watch the three show? kind of no. What <laughs> thing at the place? Big fan. They did the thing at the place, Ari. Do you not remember when they did that? You say season three was there hasn't even missed no, season two. Episode back. three. Episode three. Okay. It kinda wasn't as good, you know, when that new character came in, started talking yeah, to back. him. But then yeah, Spork came happened. back, you know, they had that funny guy cracking a lot of jokes. Okay, well, this will be the last um this the last will be the thing. last thing. I want to talk about two Thank hours, God. eight minutes. <laughs> Thank God. Okay, so, um, so, okay, Beck, you know how I like to watch kind of like dark documentaries? Do you watch High School Musical, Musical the Series? Let's go. Is that a dark documentary? It's, it's a dark documentary, bro. 
They sing very soulful songs. There's a lot of drama. Okay, so here is... I'm going to give you a synopsis of... It's the number one TV show on Netflix right now. The three-part documentary. It's called American Nightmare. Wow. And um, it's Isn't a very... Isn't that the Alan a, Wake DLC? So true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, back. Sorry, there's a there's oh. a DLC called Alan Wake American Nightmare. Uh, oh yeah. Well, um, okay. So it's this it, trigger warning. I will be talking about some SA in this. So mm-hmm. yeah. Um. Okay. So Nicola, you can leave if you don't want to hear her about SA. You know. Yeah, Nicola. You know. Yeah. He's... Super art. Yeah. The super art. <laughs> so sexual Fetter assault. Said. Oh, <laughs> Nicola! I said it not. Come on, Nicola! Come on, come on, Nicola! Um, okay, so what? So on, essentially, there's this couple in 2014, and they're like they're at they're like they're like at her house, and then some kidnappers come and they take the they take the girl and they take her to like this cabin, and then he's like knocked out with the 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 guy the boyfriend is like knocked out with a sedative, and like then he wakes up. And like the the kidnappers are like give give me some eight eight thousand dollars or something like that. And he's like he doesn't really know what to do. And like um he he goes to the police, and the police are like, okay, you did this right, dude. And they keep like they try to pin it on the boyfriend. And he's like, Ooh. are you not gonna fucking help me? Like they is pin it, it this on is the fiction, boyfriend, right? No, this is real. Real. Um. Yeah, this is real life. What is the name of this again? American Nightmare. It's a it's a documentary back. Um, it, did it just come out? Yeah, it just came out. Wait, is it like is um, it like dramatized as like actors? Is it on Apple TV? Scene, or is it like people talking? About no, it's it? just the the real people talking about this. Ah, uh, what is it on? Netflix. Um, and so, oh, okay, then no, I I haven't seen it then. And so, and so the the blame we keep, we see like the camera footage of the interrogation, which is kind of interesting because like they release those into the public. And um, they keep they like the guys all like there's um the detectives all like you know they make a poly they take make him take a polygraph test and they're like dude you fucking failed that for sure and um so you did it tell me you monster how you d- killed your girlfriend hit her and now you're kind of screwing around it's like I didn't do it guys come on you have to you have to c- fucking find her and so then like you know the is we can it's like a big mystery like what happened. Okay, so, because he tells his story, he gets some lawyers, and they believe him, and like they're wondering what happens. It, everything's really intense because, like, a white girl goes missing. That's some big ass news, you know. Um, and so, and so, but then forty eight hours later, we find her. Um. Uh, wait. Before we, it, it turns out she's like they find her like two, like um, uh, two hundred miles away, in, like um, in a close area. Like um close to um to the, where the where their house is the boy the boyfriend the girlfriends and she's all okay. There's like a security camera footage of her like walking into like a house, and so we're thinking, what's happening? And th- guys, this is actually this is actually very in our area. This is in North California, actually. Wow. Oh, that's um, crazy. They even mentioned Palo Alto later in the story. Interesting. So where um so and so like wondering what happens, and so here is a little interesting kind of perspective. There's this movie called Gone Girl, where um like um, we're like I've a, heard of like, it. so it's like a David Fincher movie where like the a boy a wife and husband and the wife disappears and but she fakes her own disappearance. Oh, I watched a YouTube short about this. And she fakes her own disappearance, and and but then she comes back and everybody everybody believes that she was a kidnapped victim, but she's actually a sociopathic manipulator. And so then they're all like. Everything's ha- the episode at the end of the first episode. It kind of rushes up to like the security camera of her like forty eight hours later after the kidnapping <laughs> to find her like she's okay and she's like wearing like a hoodie or something. And so then it cuts to throughout this entire episode, we have not like seen like um an interview with like the girl who was missing. But then the end of the first episode is like it ends up with like her sitting at like um a desk, and that's kind of like the teaser for the next episode. We're going to hear her side of the story. Mm. And so, next episode is called is titled "Gone Girl," kind of like a reference. And um, they didn't release really so them all like, at the same time. You know, this is home. Yeah, this is and so it's vi- and so here is kind of where the story takes a bit of a turn. So now 
we hear through his perspective, the boyfriend, he's just been kind of like abashed by the police. He keeps like, they all, they were fucking like, you did it, you did it, and you know, is you, you monster. They, they kind of like, they, they, they make him seem like he's like a fucking serial killer sociopath. The, the, the police, they keep kind of yelling at him. If I did it. And so That's then we hear okay, from so her perspective. And so, guys, so this is when it gets actually really, really, really sad. Ooh. And so, so we hear it from her perspective. So the thing is, from, from watching it from her perspective, we know that she did not fake this thing. Um, she, she gets kidnapped from, like, from the house. And then some guy, he drives her to like a, like a cabin. And it's like, um, the reason what they say, they, they say, because like a few months ago, the boyfriend had an ex and they said, we came here to get the ex, but we didn't realize we, but then we had to get you by accident or something. That's what, um, that's what the kidnapper says to, to the new girlfriend. And it's like, but then now they just have to kind of keep her there. And so it's like, what are they really to do? And so they have a plan where they're going to, or not, they're just going to keep her, but then they're, pro- they're going to let her the go. They're going to let her go. But first, they do this really, really horrific thing to her. It right? says, we need, we need something as leverage, so, so just in case you don't say anything to the police. So here, I might believe myself saying this, but they, they say, we're going to take a video of one of us having sex with you, and if you say anything to the police, we're going to release it online. Ooh. And so... <clears throat> She gets raped mm. once by like the main guy, and then that's really sad. But then, what's even more sad is that um, because they say the some some the some guy saying like the footage is not clearer clear, so they ha- the guy has to do it again, and this time she has to make it seem like she is consensual like doing it, and that's a very sad thing we hear from her, and so. And so then, but then they release her, you know, they release her yeah. and like the fucking, the, um, the fucking, um, cops are all like, they do a press conference. The cops are like, These, this couple has pranked us and they have stolen, they've, they've tricked our community and they've tricked us into having fear. So now this couple is kind of being br- lambasted because like they think they prank the whole community with this stunt, you know, yeah. but it wasn't a stunt. And, and so they, get fucking lambasted in the public everyone's saying there is a fucking liars and stuff like that when also simultaneously um a, the kidnappers after they release her they send an email to like a journalist and they're saying they are not lying <laughs> the even oh, kidnappers say you have to they the police they say i said come on give us some credit <laughs> and they say the police has to apologize to this couple aaron quinn and denise huskins they have to apologize but the they don't do anything about it and um, here is a real here is the real fucking thing. So Denise, after she gets escaped, because she realizes that no one kind of believes her, she gets a lawyer who believes her, and then the fucking the, they get the FBI agent in on this, and the FBI agent is so sure this is a hoax, hoax. He even tell he tells the her um, the girl's lawyer, "Well, you've seen Gone Girl, right?" And, you know, this yeah. is just like Gone That's Girl. That's why right? the episode was called Gone Girl. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen the movie Gone Girl? <laughs> You've seen the movie Gone Girl, and then this guy, and then you know it's an even t- bigger twist. That's kind of a random twist. Um, the FBI agent in charge of like the case, he had he seen used Gone to, Girl. <laughs> he used to date. He used to date the guy's ex girlfriend. That um, oh, they, no. but that. That's just kind of a crazy thing. And so then, Damn, like, nobody world. fucking believes them. She is titled as, like, real-life Gone Girl case. And, mm-hmm. um, which is very sad because, like, she t- she'd been, yeah. she'd been raped twice by and kidnapped. And the sad thing, sad thing is that this girl had been raped when she was a child as well. And we hear that, too. It's very sad. But then... It's a very um, dark I show. Think, it's not a show. It's I mean, a do- documentary. Documentary, documentary, sorry. And um, Damn. and so, but then that's the end of the first two episodes, and then the last episode, like um, this fucking um, the there's like there's a ha- there's like a home invasion, and like oh uh, the wife calls like the police, and then when like it was like a thing where the the guy the guy tried to grab like the girl of the family, 
but then he doesn't manage to because the father scares him away. And the guy, he left his phone. He literally left his phone at the house, and they called the phone, and it's like the mom says, and the mom says, this is like my son's phone number. And so they manage to track down the the son, and they go to, um to like, they find him at a cabin, and they arrest him. But at the cabin, one of the police officers, they find a gold, a, a, like a, a string of golden hair. And remind you, the girl from the from the couple, she has like blonde hair. And, uh. and so this police officer, this female police officer is really determined to find out who this um, who this b- golden hair belongs to. Because we know it belongs to the, the girlfriend. And so she does a lot of digging and digging. And she finally finds the girlfriend, and she manages to solve the case and validate the the girlfriend's story that all really happened. And you know, the the couple they that we find they get it turns out later in the future they got married. They managed to sue the the the, the government. They they got two point five million settlement. So it's all kind of a happy ending. They do have two kids now, and so yeah, it is crazy but, yeah. how much the government will pay people on settlements. You can yeah, get paid but, a and ton. So it's, yeah. But it was like so what you're of, saying is we should be throwing ourselves in front of government vehicles. That, yeah. Or the just like is, finding a ton of like potholes and like tripping on them. But it's but you guys say this, but it's kind of the opposite story where it's a gross miscarriage of yeah, government yeah, injustice no, that I, has just, happened to these two. Yeah, it's it's yeah. a terrible thing. They they should have probably gotten more money. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. but that's a it was a really interesting documentary. It's a Did really they sad story. Did they hire any of the cops or were they just, no. just pay them out? Here's a fucking funny story. Like one of the cops who who kept blaming the um the the boyfriend that he did it. He won fucking cop of the year or something in 2015. Oh. Okay, that's, that's just funny. Wanna... That's just that's just polite. I'm assuming yeah. they couldn't get any of the cops to come in for interviews for the mm. show. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um but yeah. yeah. And even like the female cop who found like the golden hair at the guy's house and the, oh yeah, this guy who was like a kidnapper he's he's like when he said when he originally kidnapped the girlfriend he said like i'm part of like a black market agency thing when in reality he's just kind of like a fucking harvard grad lawyer who's like who kidnap who like he who just who seems like he just does this for kind of like randomly like kind of like a serial killer doesn't seem like he's part of any really thing and he's a very sloppy guy because he fucking left his phone at a, yeah. at a house fucking sending emails or something <laughs> and um yeah but yeah, and so it's like a, his name is Matthew M- Mueller or something, and um, he's he's sentenced to like forty years in prison, and uh, yeah, only forty years. Well, I mean, yeah, he, I did, he, he did kind of admit to it, which I get, I think yeah. lessens sentences, right? Really? That's what yeah. I was saying, Does saying it? that you're guilty lessens yeah, your sentence. Yeah. Yeah. Typically, plea deals, it just yeah. like that's just like if you if you yeah if you get a plea yeah. deal, but then why was the plea deal so? Good. Yeah, but I mean, forty years. I mean, forty years is probably going to be the rest of his life. I yeah, guess. yeah. Um, I mean, how old was he's he? He's like fifty or something. Yeah, no, he's oh, not okay, yeah. in like prison. prison. But um, and so we finally um, we at least their story finally gets kind of like vindicated and validated, you know. And, yeah. Um, it is hopefully maybe after this documentary, some of the police we do some investigation into the. Um, miscarriage of justice so <sighs> does anybody want to give the wreck Ted. no i, I, I think the i forgot wreck... there was a second list i made of like six more things i gotta <laughs> talk about give me a sec oh yeah okay <laughs> anyway let's ignore that we can save that for next episode <laughs> i'm kidding i think the wreck will be Ted. because Ted. it's available okay we can do ted but also i think because it's available for everybody for free on youtube oh yeah been hotel watch the first episode of Has Been Also, Hotel Mean Girls right now, pilot. free with ads on YouTube if you want to watch it. Yeah. Also, really? all of The Sopranos on TikTok in 25 seconds. Yeah. And watch American watch. Nightmare. It's a good documentary. Sad it feels good. way too dark. <laughs> but then, Ted, that's funny. Bear does yeah. weed. If you want funny. Oh, good. If you want dark, do this. <laughs> all right. Let's wrap this up. Always use right. CSN. Right. 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 for the strongest. I always use Celsius. Um.